Thank you. Thank you. So, why Springfield? I get asked that a lot, and I choose to live here because Springfield is a place that I can enjoy the life I want. I love the outdoors. You can be on the lake in just a short drive. It only takes me 10 minutes to get to work. Or off to anywhere in the world. I know my kids will be safe and well educated. There are really good job opportunities after graduation. I'm able to work remotely and create on a high level. The healthcare options in this area are incredible. The options for housing and cost of living are so affordable. We have room to create. I love to experience the excitement of sports. Can't beat the food. Or the drinks. Why Springfield? Because all the pieces you need to create your own story are here. The only thing missing is you. And live from Jordan Valley Ice Park, Stan Melton Ice Arena, it is the fifth annual Police versus Fire charity hockey game. Hello, everybody. Steve Casson, along with Kevin Gund uh, Grundy, that is, from the Police Department, Professional Development Coordinator, Brian Fick from the Fire Department. He's a captain with Station 5B, and uh, we'll get these guys introduced right now. And uh, Gentlemen, welcome. It's another game that you guys are going to be a part of. Well, at least one of you will. Yeah. But Kevin, you you were a part of it because you scored a goal last I, week. I or last did. Week. I did. Yeah. Yeah. It was a uh, good time. It's always a good time. So it, this is always a, a fun time. We'll take a, a look at what happened last year as we take a look at the Cadence Insurance pregame report, and then we'll talk a little bit more about this. But. If we look at the Cadence Insurance pregame report and we take a look at what happened last year, and for the fire department, Justin Nielsen scored the first goal of the game. In fact, he scored four goals in the game. Fire scored the first three goals of the contest, and then later on it was Zach Keller with a shorthanded goal, Ben Houston, and Joel Grieshaber also with a goal. Clayton Miller and Jeff Elliott had a couple of assists each and seven different players had assists in that game. Dan Zacker stopped 31 of 33 shots, and the fire department, all of a sudden, uh, they, they can't be beat, can they? Well, you said it, I didn't, so. Ooh, be beat yet. 
species yet. yet. I, I, yeah. I'm trying. Yeah, I'm trying to get it's, a little rivalry okay. going. The future's here. long. It's okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, let's take a look at what the fire <laughs> department, or, or excuse me, the police department did, and they got a couple. Uh, well, they got a goal from uh, Jimmy Ramsey, and we just mentioned Kevin. You got a goal uh, yeah, in the yeah. game. You had a goal actually and an assist last, oh. last year. You don't remember that, do you? It's been a while. You know, the the level of intensity is just so intoxicating. You know, you don't know what happens out yeah, there. Absolutely. Right? It's just crazy. And then goaltender Brian Wilson stopped 33 of 40 shots. As we take a look at the game history, and, of course, in 2019, a 6-3 fire win, a 7-3 fire win in 2020. No game in 2021, I'm assuming, because of COVID. Mm -hmm. And in 2022, a 10-3 fire victory. And then we just talked about uh, last year, 7-2 mm -hmm. fire victory. So police are hoping that they can uh, get a victory to hear this. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to probably start the slow clap now, just so uh, it starts the rally. He's calling his shot. Him, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I feel like he's calling his shot. Well, it's it's one of those things. Like I was, I'm glad you did show up. <laughs> yeah. And I, I don't want to point fingers, but usually they wait for the police officer to get uh -oh. somewhere to yeah. make sure it's safe yeah. before they come in. So the box yeah. is safe. I'm glad okay. you're here. Yep. Uh, Seems safe. Seems secure. That's right. I good. appreciate it. Now we can do our job. Yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> I just want to point out something here. What is that? That's a total of. Trying to do the math real quick. Yeah. Well, oh, he took you it away. I think it was 11 to 10 finger? in our one game. In our one game, so lopsided. I don't want to call it, but maybe. That's true. That's true. Yeah. That's that's very fair. That's very fair. But no. I tell you, this year is a little different. Um, not that we went out and recruited people, but you know, part of active police recruitment. <laughs> oh, is okay. hey, can you play hockey? Question number one on their interview panel. Yeah. <laughs> can you play hockey? <laughs> no. Yeah, disqualified. Exactly. <laughs> That's funny. So over the last couple of years, we've had guys who used to play hockey join the department. We're like, oh, you play hockey? You're a gold member. Here you go. Right? So <laughs> well, a couple of those guys are playing today. Speaking of the roster, Scott, if we can uh, uh, take a look at that roster for the team as we look at tonight's rosters and as you take a look at it. Okay, so for the police department, which is on the right-hand side, mm -hmm. who's new? Who's your... Uh, your sniper, your your, your guy, Ooh, the sniper. one that uh, I'm not going to give out our sniper location. <laughs> oh, okay, you don't. Know I mean, that's, that's rule number one of tactical. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, all right. Uh. But I will tell you. Um, so we've been playing a lot better in C League. A couple of our players, we play C League hockey. You know, in the rec league here, uh, a couple of our players got asked to move up to the B League because they were just kind of outscoring everybody. So Where most of Fire already plays. <laughs> just so we can <laughs> clarify that yeah. for him. Hey, okay, okay. Some of us still have training wheels <laughs> on our skates. All right. So now are some of the B-League players on the roster? Yeah, uh, so, so Jimmy Ramsey, which you mentioned earlier, he's, he's a stud. Uh, Cisneros, he's done really well and gotten a lot better. Jordan Louderball, um, when he's on, he's on. It's great. So some of the new guys, let's get down. We got Adams. Uh, Roby's only been on the department for a year and a half, two years, but he's new to the team. Um, Let's see. I'm going to skip down all the way to our defense. It looks like that's where they're at. Uh, Craig Fisher, a great northern kid from Wisconsin, came down. And, you know, he's just probably an uh, all-around good player. Yep. Um, when, you, when you realize that uh, you're, you probably should play down a little, he, he does really well. And then, uh, let's see, we got some players who haven't played in a while. Carlton uh, Higgins, he's from New York. Um, he played a lot. Um, and then, of course, we got... Hill, Pizak, Bolton, Merklin, all those guys who have been, and Steve, Adams, all those guys have been on the team for a while. But and the Higgins and uh, Fisher are the two newbies. And Pizak's probably their smartest player on the team. He sure. raised his son to become a fireman. So That's right. Pretty smart by Pizak <laughs> there. Saw the other side, talked his son into that. That's definitely, that's a very valid point. That's a very so valid point. So we have the first shot fired in that uh, police usually wait for, or excuse me, fire usually wait for police. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so so on the fire side, what, what, what's your uh, well, I kind of, to that? I've, I've kind of already tipped my hat to him, if you will, but uh, my question would be how many firefighters have left to join the police department? <laughs> And I'll just answer for him because it's zero. Yeah. Okay. We yeah. Are, we're getting about two a year probably getting, for, for the last couple of years yeah. from coming from PD over to the good side, if you will. So that's just my rebuttal, and the case just kind of makes itself. So 
that's 100% fair. I mean, you know, it's hard to want to work hard, you know. <laughs> Some yeah. some people's parents didn't instill yeah. that in them as a kid. Yeah. So yeah. Take the easy road. It's fair though. I mean. Okay. So the question I have is, I know with fire, it's uh, you know so many hours on, so many hours off. Is that the way it is with PD? We're always on. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. So our, our working every day. Our patrol <laughs> squads do 12-hour uh, shifts now on patrol, and then everybody in other assignments usually do about uh, four tens. That's kind of where it works, but. Okay. We don't get the we don't get the days off. Here we go. Yeah, we will get into more of that, but uh, right now the teams are taking the ice. And uh, Scott, let's finish out the Cadence Insurance pregame report. But that is finishing out the Cadence Insurance <laughs> pregame report. So we are all good. And guys, if you're having trouble hearing, I've got a, a volume set up here. So. Uh, just let me know and I can adjust your volume, but if you're good, everything's good. good. Thank you. But we have all the announcements of the rosters. We've got some on ice festivities coming on and uh, we'll see if we can uh, reach Kevin Greasy with all of that. But uh, it's nice to see everybody just kind of lined up and uh, this will be a fun game tonight. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. it's a fun game goes to a great cause. Yeah. Uh, that's what it's about, raising it, the money and everything else. Yes. Everyone wants to see the fights, but what you don't see is everyone in the locker room before joking with each other, having fun. Wait, you guys fight? The Siri, uh -huh. I, I've heard that. <laughs> Let's uh, join public address announcer Tim Greasy for the on-ice festivities here. Ladies and gentlemen, we would kindly ask that you please rise and remove your hats for the presentation of colors. Our colors this afternoon are presented by the Springfield Police Department and the Springfield Fire Department Joint Honor Guard. And the playing of our national anthem is presented by Southern Missouri Professional Firefighters Local 152 Pipes and Drum Corps. Nice. Gotta like that, guys.
Springfield Police and Springfield Fire Joint Honor Guard Firefighters Local 152 Pipes and Drum Corps. Our national anthem from Jordan Valley Ice Park, Stan Milton Ice Arena. Guys, what about that? Well, I say maybe the goalie will get winded now after yes, having to play all that. Yeah, he won't. Speaking of goaltenders. Uh, that was Dan Zacker on the bagpipes uh, from IFF 152. Yeah, he'll be the goaltender tonight out of uh, Battlefield Fire Protection District Station 4 as we have a ceremonial puck drop. Starting for the guns, it'll be Brian Wilson, fireman. He was a fireman at Lake of the Ozarks. He's now with the Mercy Hospital yep. System. We've, uh, we've not been able to lock down someone on the police side to play goalie yet, so they really helped us out. Even in the uh, C League. Yeah, next hiring process. <laughs> Question yeah. two. Yeah, do you right. play goalie? Do you Gosh, play goalie? You didn't ask me. I oh, mean, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I wouldn't be able to do this, but I can <laughs> play. I will give Dan a shout out because in our rec league, he helped us last couple yeah. of games um, trying to get warmed up for this. So He's a good guy. Yeah. of Green County, Missouri. Thank you. So a couple of housekeeping items. One of the things that we will do, midway through the third period, we'll stop the game. We will have, or the fans will have the ability to find out who won the specific drawings for giveaways that uh, they are able to, to bid on. And then we are going to have Police Chief Paul Williams come in and talk about recruiting. And so, oh, and, and so if, <laughs> I can ask him. I can ask him. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, Brian, you guys need a goalie. <laughs> well, I don't mean recruiting for the hockey team. I mean recruiting. Oh, I know. Hockey. I know. Absolutely. Well, you, hey, two for one here. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Referees for today's game will be Mark Marzola. No, it'll be Ryan Armstrong. It, it, there was a joke that I had with him and Mark Marzola earlier, but it'll be Ryan Armstrong and Mike Hartman. <coughs> Both of those guys will be goal, uh, the uh, referees here tonight. We are just about ready to get things going at Jordan Valley Ice Park, Stan Melton Ice Arena. Thanks for tuning in. Tell your friends. I, I will say, I don't, want to I don't want to discount the fact that Brian has helped us so much. He's a great dude. We love having him. Don't, don't get me wrong on that. Fresh 16 minutes on the clock. We will do 16 minute stop time here. Fire will skate from the left to the right. Police from the right to the left. And we are moments away from getting this game underway. It is a packed house here at here we go. Ice Park. And yes, uh, Papa Elliott wins the face off. Fire with possession. He's coming out early. Intercepted Good though. Good skill by Ramsey. Get the puck in their zone. Get the puck in their zone. There we go. Ooh. Hey, I'll let you guys take over. All right. No, we're doing uh, doing what we need to right now. Be a very <laughs> irritating presence in their zone. Oh, I thought you meant on the air. <laughs> oh, he's doing that too. Yeah, just don't wait. <laughs> Give me time. It'll get worse. <laughs> yeah, same here. The fire comes right back into the zone. Drive comes in, it's blocked. Blocked by Fisher. Oh, good cross the net. That's Dave Easter with the shot. Oh. Wrap around behind the net, and a good try by Joel Grieshaber, and the puck is taken away and cleared. I think Fisher cleared that out. Good smart play. It's icing, yep. but it gives us a good shift change. Fire's going to change shifts too. We had a habit, I'll say, of, of not changing shifts fast enough, and it's pretty important in this game, so we stay fresh and have fresh legs. Speaking of shift change, so I've got to ask, how does that work? So if you're getting down to the end of your shift and maybe somebody can't come in, mm -hmm. uh, do you guys just cover for them for yeah. a little bit? And then how does that work? Do, do you guys just do it on, on, on a friendly basis, or is there any way of making up any of that extra time? Um, I, well, we have a standard rotation. So you got three sets of play. You know, there's 15 out there, so three different shifts to cover what's going on out there. Oh, a shot. Oh, oh. 
Got a break. He's got a breakaway. Taylor oh. Bolton. Oh. Goes down to the ice. Well, he hadn't played in a bit, so his practicing still yeah. paying off, so it's good. I like the steal, though. Oh, who got the steal? Oh. Cisneros had the steal on that. Nice. Looks like Steve is trying to defend, walked him out. Now fire with possession. It'll be Phil Dodge. Good power, Philly D. Pass up the middle to Cisneros. I think we're still getting some of those uh, jitters out yeah, of the way yeah. from the beginning of the game for sure. Feel the ice out. Shot comes in wide. It'll go to the far side. Centering pass and a good deflection by Cisneros. See if Higgins takes it all the way up. I hope he does. Pass good pass out. across good. the ice, but he couldn't hold to it. We'll clear the puck out of the zone. The puck stays in the zone. Yeah, Jeff Steve oh. had a good chance right there. He's in the child crimes unit out of O'Fallon, Missouri. I'd really like to see big old Philly D up there <laughs> take a shot from the blue line. Just that let guy, it loose. That guy can whack that puck, man. It's kind of scary. Who shot across the net, but they didn't have Nobody anyone there. up there. Steve's going to take it. He's going to take it on down and lead the charge. Ladder balls on the other side. Ooh, clears the zone. Looks like we got our shift change going. He's actually got to get off. All right, they dumped it in, but Fire's going to keep it. Smart pass off the boards. Kaylee Friend with a good deflection. Yeah, to answer your question, though, so they try to um, go in shifts as far as, you know, stay on the ice maybe a minute, minute and a half max. I mean, you talk NFL players, I think they're on the ice for like 45 seconds at a time. So you just don't want to wear yourself out and get back on the ice. You want to uh, stay fresh the whole game, so. Well, now I'm going to have to clarify because I didn't mean hockey. I yeah. mean, I'm I mean in he's talking our shift changes. Oh, like our, just in like, work. I, I was, yeah, man, you're I so know. wrapped up in hockey, he just wants to talk to us. I know, us. I'm sorry. He's trying to feel us out, I feel like. Yeah, so. Uh, you know Obviously, what? we cover for fire because usually we have to wake them up beforehand. <laughs> oh. Make sure they don't get the red ring of death on their Xbox, you yeah. know, stuff like that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you but can feel the jealousy probably yes. in the entire arena. It's very tense in here right now. <laughs> exactly. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, to get some information out of you guys. Yeah. I'm sorry. So You're for us, for us, if... Uh, what we try to do is they try to schedule it out, so we work 24-hour shifts, so the battalions will go through, and if they know somebody's not going to be there the next shift, they'll try to backfill that with somebody from another station. And then if uh, maybe somebody gets sick last minute and they can't come in, we try to, we just cover that until they can get somebody up there to, to fill that spot. Okay, guys, what is the funniest excuse you heard of why somebody was late? I can't say that on the air. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, usually there's some, honestly, most people know when they got a, oh, another shot on goal by uh, Fisher. Good but save Dan by saved it. Dan Zacker. We should be paying attention in case they score. But you were saying. Yeah, so they try to cover. If we have to stay late, we stay late. It's not a huge deal. Oh, good save by Dan again. Fisher's zipping that puck at him. Grease Haver's got the puck back behind the. There was some concern that he may not play this game, but uh, he came out and played. I know on our side we were a little concerned. Good center pass. Good Knocked away. Get it out of the zone. Oh, Kappa. Jimmy Ramsey going to take it down if he can keep hold he of got it. Got back on defense. He scored a goal last oh. week. Oh, uh, last game, that is. That's Craig Fisher again. Oh, hit the back of the back net. Back of the net. Caleb Elliott with a good deflection there. Oh, you got to get back for that defense. Oh, oh. Zach is just working in the net right now. My goodness. Look at him go. We're going to have to clear that out of the zone pretty quick. Defense is going to get to get back because he's going to uh, come down here the Here comes ice. Grease Haver. Is it Grease Haver? Looks like yep, it. Yep, it looks like it by the skating. There we go. Good. Yeah, I believe it's a goal. I, I believe it's it. a goal. 
You can hear that one hit the note by back here. Yeah. I couldn't see who it was. It might be Devin Keeney. Let's look here. Just slid it right past him right there. What can't tell what number we have. Yeah, it's 90, Devin Keeney. Number got. 90, DK. <laughs> Goal scored by the fire department by number 90. Assisted by 17, 17 and 90 on the fire department goal. Phil, Philly D, Philly Dodge oh. gets it taken away from him, but Juicy looks like gets it away it from him, but they still control it. Fire's gonna hold it in. Out in front of the net. Good oh. save there by cover up by Brian. Good job. So the goal is Keeney, his first, of course. Free Shaver with the assist, one nothing right now. A good time to get some fresh legs in the game. Yep. Shot, oh. lets one rip. They may have got the first goal, but it was nearly ten, uh, five minutes into the period before yeah. it happened. So I, I positives. like that. I like that. He's like thinking that. positive. <laughs> I have to. I'm a positive guy. I don't care what anyone listening to this says. <laughs> I'm a positive guy. So last year, Fire got the first goal at 642. That was Nielsen's first of four last <laughs> season. Look comes out, fires Andy Marriage oh. with it. Oh, oh, who got that? Kaylee Frame yeah, got the steal, dumped it into their zone, but he's able to take it. Up. Merklin's got him off. Nielsen's gonna go back and get it. I gotta remember not to yell on this thing when I get excited. <laughs> I get a little amped up. I get the pleasure of doing some coaching with some young football, and I tend to yell a yeah, lot. Same. So I, I got to get a little worked up every I do some coaching right. with some uh, 14 u baseball and tend to do the same thing. <laughs> it's actually just where I came from, so I'm, it's fresh in my system. <laughs> I don't do any coaching. Yeah, lucky you. <laughs> you, coach, you coached us on yeah. how to act today. Yeah, absolutely. Very PG. There we go. I believe that's Yates. Oh, crash the boards. The rebound in front, we, we Nielsen a, just missed. We got a player down. We got the two players down, I think. Kaylee Looks like Kaylee Friend's down. Yates is making sure she's okay. Yeah, I think it was an unintentional smack. She hit the side. We wanted to make sure that uh, she was okay. Yep, a little she good is, sportsmanship. She's a stud, and I'll, I'll just brag on her. She got inducted into the Sports Hall of Fame here recently. Because I think, if I get, remember correctly, she played every position in a softball game at Evangel. Oh, wow. In one game. That's impressive. Yeah, she's tough. Yeah, she's being helped off here, but I'm sure she'll be back. Take a little breather. Yep. Yeah, she's able to skate. She oh, was yeah. Not putting much pressure on, but now looks like she should be okay. Oh. You, know, you know it's good when you go to the bench. Yeah, yeah not straight yeah. to the locker room. That's got face off here. It's a Jeff that, Elliott. That's Papa the, Elliott. Old man Elliott wins the face off. <laughs> I remember the one hockey game. He came out with a box of donuts by our uh, bench trying to entice us. Yeah. We stood strong. No, you didn't. <laughs> Ate him at intermission. I know what happened. Here's Ramsey. Hey, a training nugget is a training <laughs> nugget. <laughs> Anna Westerfield broke it up momentarily. Shot comes in and missed yep. wide by Fisher. Buck is Fisher's going to get down easy. Looks like Brian's going to stop it for him. Yep. But they got two coming in hard. Fisher says, no thank you today, yep. kids. This is my house. I'm going to go down today. He's sick of it. Oh, oh that one in. Oh, 
tied up right now. Greg Fisher with the goal, baby. Twelve twelve will be the time of this goal here in the first period, nice. and PD have tied it up on Fisher's goal. Fisher took it all the way from his zone all the way down the field or uh, ice, and uh, <laughs> I'm getting my sports yeah, mixed there's up. There's that football coming out. There's a touchdown. Yeah. Why is Long drive in the red zone. <laughs> Why is there only one point on the board? <laughs> yeah. I thought that was six. Police goal scored by number four, badge number 0214. Oh, that badge number's really high. <laughs> We're getting up there. Yeah, so are we. Good stop, but it clears the zone, so they got to clear going to take it back and control it. They're getting their set up. Let them make a, figure out where they're going with this bad boy. Hill with the Chris deflection. Tried to play it all the way down to Chief Houston. We got to make uh, some smart passes. I don't know if that was ice or I guess it looked like gone. he waved it off. Is that Hardman? Because he can't see anyway. <laughs> well, Hartman's over by the police bench, so that was Ryan Armstrong. Oh, okay. We like having those guys ref our games. They're, they're good people, man. They do a lot of work Juicy's here. gonna bring it up into the police zone. Philly D with a stop. Yep. Who's he pass it up to? Oh, uh, he passes Steve. it up to, oh no, he does it up to himself. Steve, who's going <laughs> with that? That's called the oopa doop. Yep. Stolen, Cisneros. Cisneros, good, uh, good dude, hard worker. Played ball here, I uh, can't remember, I think over at Evangel, he played ball. Trying to kick that puck in the corner so uh, Fire can get some fresh bodies out there. Yep. Shots even up at seven apiece. We're tied 1-1. One, one. I mean, this Your is crazy. going to bring the puck up into the zone. This is as much work as you guys are going to do in like three weeks. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. He's just toying with him, it yep. looks like. Keith Houston's just playing around. <laughs> Gets him, it out in front of the net. Getting him worn out a little bit. <clears throat> Tyler Poole here plays it back into the corner. Oh, get up on it, sis. Oh, there you go. Cisneros is going to take it all the way down. Poole plays some good defense, knock it away. Oh, we got one of our own in the goal. It doesn't count, Brian, when you're there, buddy. <laughs> it's got to be the puck. I've heard stopping's the hardest part. Oh. Offside. Ooh. 520 to go in the period of 1-1 one, one game again. The goals by the Fires Keeney, Devin Keeney gets the first one and then the police is Fisher, Craig Fisher on a nice shot from the left circle. Got it off and right past the goaltender. Who Dan, Dan Zager has been playing Phenomenal. It yeah. started out oh, early yes. on. He had to make some huge saves. Tyler Fool's going to bring it up, passes it over to Nielsen. The flexibility to get up and down like those goalies has to is phenomenal. My hips don't do that anymore. Uh, my entire body doesn't work <laughs> like that, not just my hips. Oh, what a oh. save on the return pass. He goes down to the ice, he's back up. Yeah, he got a shot off. Fisher's going to take it down again, see what he can do with it. Now he's got some help, see if he passes it off. Oh. Poked away. Oh, we had a tripping. Oh, they're not going to call it. Louderball well, definitely got tripped up, but it's what it is. <clears throat> Good pass up to Louderball. See if he can keep it under control, but he got away from him. Shaw's going to take it back behind the net. Plays it up to Nielsen. Over to Yates. All around the <laughs> board it goes. Take like it a ring around the Rosie. Looks like waved off. Brian stopped it. Merklin's going to pass oh. it. Oh, but it's intercepted. Easter has the puck. Taking it back on the net. Lost track of him. Still got it. All right. Would you rather, since you're into baseball, would you rather take a full-on slap shot as a goalie to the chest or a full pitch from a pitcher? I'm probably, whew, I'm probably going slap shot because of the padding. 
Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Just, just not. I don't want to do either. I would have just gotten out of the way. <laughs> yeah, I mean? move. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm not the smartest guy. I'm gonna take it off. Yeah, like I'm gonna hit. It's gonna hit me. You're gonna be like a Happy yeah. Gilmore in the batting cage. Yeah, only like 364 more days of the hockey tryouts. <laughs> well, as a goalie, I've taken a shot to the chest where up at the top by the yeah, where the there's no padding. Cool. Yep, that's horrible. And that. I've been beamed in the back on the shoulder by a 90 mi 95 yeah. mile an hour fastball. Well, so either so way. Either so way, it's going to hurt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so which one hurt more? The fastball. Yeah. Absolutely. Those laces sting. Oops. Not not saying this doesn't now here, but those laces bite you. We were in a game. I think it was this game I, last year. I, I got in the way, and I thought, I'm glad I wore a cup. Yeah. The cup did not help. Yeah. It was very uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, I took a shot the other day for my son pitching in the old cup region, didn't have a cup, and it didn't feel good. Looks like, oh, Adam oh, with a shot on the rebound. Oh! In, baby. Oh, yeah. It was getting chippy down there with Adams, and uh, I couldn't tell which fireman was down there. I couldn't either, but that's Good bounce stop, and someone was right there to knock yep. it in. Holy cow. Got a looks replay like, coming up here on the screen. Yeah, it looks like Daniel Carlson right out in front. Number nice. 70, was it? 74. 74, 74 yeah. I believe, yeah. Dan's one of our, uh, he's a SWAT league commander. He's in charge of our SWAT team. So, good little bowling ball to have out there. There you go. Ones are wild. The police goal is scored by number 41. Oh. Assisted by 31 oh, and 41. 41. Oh, 41 is For the police department, 41 from 31 and 21. Nice. Yep. Well, so all, all the ones were in there. Yeah. So Trevor Merkling, I guess. Oh, oh good here move. we go. Here we go. Oh, good save. You get it? I think he got it. Juicy's trying to trying to get something. No, it's a save for sure. Yeah. He's trying to say he was in the across the red line when he cut. Why is his name Juicy? Huh? Hey. Can't, that, can't explain is, on air. Is that a station secret? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Juicy's still down there arguing his case. There. So it looks like it's Merkling's goal from Adams and Ramsey. Okay, okay. I'll take that. 17-12 will be the time of the goal. Three got the puck. Jimmy the Jet Ramsey, let's go, baby. Oh, another oh. deflection. Higgins is there to get it and get it out of the zone. Three oh. got it. If you're the cops, this is not the guy you want to have the puck. No. No, no. That guy knows what he's doing. Man. Oh, we got a goal oh. right there. Looks like that is, I can't tell. Looks like Chief Houston. There we go. Chief Houston puts one in the net. Tie this up for us. Oh, he wants us to get oh. it out. He's feeling good. Oh, I like it. Yeah, he's Very feeling sorry. good. You know what I like, though? I hope we're making the fire team nervous because yeah. I don't think they expected it to be 2-2 before the end of the first period, that's for sure. Oh, get fire it up wins there. the face off, plays up to Tyler Poole. Fisher takes control. Oh, he loses it. Fire department goal scored by engine 12, assisted by emergency rescue 98 and 17. <laughs> goal scored by number 12. Oh, they lose it. Oh, well, t has got the puck, bringing it up. We got He's gonna no have a one on one. Oh, good nice save. save by Brian. By the cut. Shaw tried to play it back out front. Nielsen's controlling it right now. The shot oh, 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 another good save. Get out of that zone, boys. Let's go. So have you ever played hockey at all? Uh, no, not really. I played a random skate session with these boys because I can skate, but okay, okay. I'm not very good at the hockey part. I understand. <laughs> Looks like we're going to get a shift change on the icing call. So everybody's going to get some fresh start out there. So that goal at 18.02, it's Houston's goal. The assists to Horning and Grieshaber, who now has two assists man, in this oh man. game. we got to keep him off the ice. He's a scary man out there. Yeah. 
So, Kevin, you said you, you got a, a couple of uh, extra guys to kind of make this a uh, even contest, and it looks like it is right now. Well, so I don't want to just attribute it to that. Yes, it does help having good players. We've actually, this team's been practicing a lot, and one of the things that we don't have the best at is getting the ice time because we have so many different shifts, like we guys that work thirds or seconds or maybe a detective. And uh, so for them to all get on the ice at the same time can be pretty challenging. So they've tried to be more diligent, go to stick and puck and different things like that to get better. And just spending time playing in the C League together helps a lot too. So, But we'll take it. We'll take all of it. Oh, hard oh, into oh. the boards on his own accord, though. You got to watch that ice. It's really slick yeah, out there. Yeah, heard it slick. Adams with the puck, makes a move. Who lost oh. the stick? Somebody, oh, looks like Papa. Papa Elliot. Elliot. Papa Elliot lost the stick. Oh, nice oh. shot. Oh, get oh, oh, clears it out. Can't see who that was for fire that cleared it out. Adams goes down on the board. Oh. That'll do it for the period. We'll have to figure out the time again because I realize the 16 minute period is not 20 <laughs> minutes, so we'll have to take four off of all this time. <laughs> oh my goodness. A little quicker. Yeah, well, we'll get it all figured out, but it's a 2-2 game. Shots on goal. Brian Wilson faces 12. Dan Zacker faces 10. And then the first goal was Keeney from Grieshaber, and the fire take the lead. Police with Fisher, it's a 1-1 game. Then Merkling takes the lead for the police and then the fire come back on Houston's goal and 2-2 is where we are after one period of play. That's great. Well, coming up in just a moment, we are going to be hearing from Kim Roberts, who's a board member on the Green County 100 Club. She's a widow of a fallen Green County deputy and uh, looks like. Looks like she's coming in. Yep, one of you guys will have to give up yep. your head. I'll give her mine. Are you sure? Oh, yeah. Oh. Or, I'll let you guys talk. She doesn't what that means. No, I, yes, she does. That's right. I'm going to fight in here. I'm scared of everybody. <laughs> yeah, there you go. We will get a headset on. Okay. And uh, of course, as I mentioned, it is Kim Roberts. Now, Kim, a couple of questions. Uh, first of all, uh, condolences to you and your loss. Thank and you. how are you doing? How are you handling all of this? Doing well, doing well. We're now at the almost five and a half year mark. Um, and, uh, you know, we, from day one, we have felt the support and the um, community around us, organizations around us. Uh, come around and support us and they haven't stopped yeah. so now um, you're a board member of this Green County 100 Club. I am I am now, would you have been a board member regardless of what happened to you I had no idea that the Green County 100 Club existed uh, until 12 hours after Aaron passed mm. um, I remember we lost him on a Friday night and on Saturday morning um, I was met by three organizations the funeral assistance team Missouri Concerns of Police Survivors, and then Green County 100 Club. Um, since then, I'm, I'm actually the current president of our Missouri Concerns of Police Survivors. Um, and then I work also with the funeral team, just um, helping organize um, survivors and stuff. And then, um, and then with the Green County 100 Club, um, then 12 hours of them, or within 12 hours of Aaron passing, they brought me a $25,000 check. So when March 2020 rolled around, I was like, I need to give back, you sure. know, I need to give back. And, um, and so, that, yeah, so that's when I joined, but I had no clue who they were. Um, had I known, I probably would have gotten involved with them. It's amazing how many organizations are out here that do this, not only yeah. for the police side, but the fire as well. Absolutely. Um, it doesn't take much for that community to get involved. Um, I was in your shoes back in 90. My father was killed in the line of duty. And the amount of people that just show up and, and help support family through all that transition is huge. And that's that's one of the things we joke about recruitment and stuff like sure. that. But it doesn't matter red, blue. It doesn't matter. You're coming into a family. Absolutely. And um, we don't always like the circumstances that we get exposed to that level of family that mm -hmm. we, we get actually have. But, yeah, 
it's good for you to get involved because you realize the importance of it and, and the importance of supporting other people. Yeah, so, yeah, and awesome. honestly, um, helping other survivors um, yeah. is really where the healing had started for me. Yeah. And I, like I said, I got heavily involved with our other survivors in our state. Um, because I know I looked at other one, other um, like I have a widow that's one of my best friends, and she lost her husband almost to the date, yeah. um, ten, 10 years. And I looked at her and I said, I can do this. Yep. You know, I can I can keep moving forward mm -hmm. and continue to remember Erin. That's great. Um, and so for me, that was powerful for me to see that, and I thought, I've got to be there. Uh -huh. I've got to get there. Yep. I'm sure as an organization, they – they appreciate you jumping aboard. I mean, you've experienced this, and somebody who's gone through it, I'm sure you can remember what it was like just moments afterwards trying to figure out what are you going to do, and then here comes this organization, mm -hmm. takes all that pressure off, so you can relate to a lot of folks in that respect. Is it still difficult? I mean, you're not going through it, but you know other people are, but is it still difficult for you? Um, in times, it is. Um, it just kind of depends on in that moment. Um, you know, I have told other survivors um, there's no wrong or way, right, wrong or right way to grieve. There's a destructive way, but there's no wrong or right way. And in this moment, if you are good, that's fine. Yeah. And if the next moment you're not, that's okay. Right. You know, and you feel those emotions and you reach out to people if you need to. Right. Um, or, you know, I've often, uh, even today, um, it's been one year since we lost my father-in-law uh, right. to a heart attack. And, you know, I've, I've told my mother-in-law, I'm like, whatever you want to do. If you want to be by yourself, if you want to be with us, right. if you want to be wherever, you know. Um, so, yes, I can have my difficult days. Uh, in fact, just the other night, I sat on my porch and took a breather because it was nice, ice and cold uh, outside. And I just needed that moment. I needed to be reminded that I was okay and yeah. I, can, I can get through it. So. This, obviously the organization is, is a great organization and it helps public service. What what are some of the, the goals? I mean, you're, you're part of the club now, so are there goals that they talk about uh, that maybe need to be established or, or want to be established? Honestly, our end goal is to never give another penny away. Um, but we would love to see a million dollars in our bank account. We would love to, and we're, and we're getting there. Um, but we would love to be able to have that fund available for those families that, and the, you know, like I said, I remember 12 hours after getting that check and then I asked someone a week later, I was like, what do I do with this? And then she's like, sure. deposit it, <laughs> Use it. <laughs> like put it in yeah. your account. And you know, for me, I, I put it in the account and I paid the bills and I paid the things and, and in that moment I was able to focus on honoring Aaron and making sure my six year old was good. And it, six months down the road is when I went, uh, okay. It actually meant that I could put my feet on the ground and keep walking and keep taking those steps because finances are just a struggle, you know. Um, and so, you know, when you lose that main income, he, you know, clearly was the breadwinner in our house. Sure. Um, you know, you go, how? How do I do this? But the really cool thing about our community is um, I remember a year and a half before Aaron asked me, he goes, how much life insurance should I take out? And I said, just enough to get me out of debt, then I can figure out how to live. <laughs> and it was 120000 Our community raised $120,000. So, so I was able to put that life insurance into an account and just let it be. <laughs> um, you know, so our community came around to us and, and paid our mortgage off, paid my car off, did so many incredible things. Yeah. So, What you, you mentioned about having a million dollars in the bank account. So besides this, what other things are there to raise money? Uh, what other events do we events, do? Yes. Sorry. Um, so every fall we do uh, a salute to Green County um, and all of our first responders in that group. Um, and uh, we look for sponsorships through that. And that is our main source. Um, we've hit $50,000. I'd love to see us hit $100,000 at that event. Um, it's such a neat event. Um, and so much fun. And then we have this uh, that we come alongside with the fire and PD to uh, help support the ice game. And, um, and you know, we're looking at other options like doing a pickleball thing. I know pickleball is like the hot mm -hmm. topic sure. right now. Um, so we're looking at doing a pickleball tournament. But for the most part, it's just through sponsors and through donations mm -hmm. and through our membership. Okay, let's talk about something fun here. 
I, I'm sure you've been to, and, and Brian can't hear us anyway, So, <laughs> but I'm sure you've been to uh, barbecues from both sides, from police and fire, right? You've been to, to barbecues and things from, from both sides, maybe? Maybe. I don't know. I mean, I, enough to say who, who's got the better barbecue? Oh, I, I don't know. I mean, it's I okay. have to you go. You can say it. I have to go to the police officers, yeah, of way course. Better. But, I mean, it always boils down to, you know, Team Donut or Team Nap, right? That's true. <laughs> but... You know, rumor yeah. has it, right, though, that fire is not as busy as police, so they have more time to cook. And nap. Oh, that's yeah. true. That's, that's very true. Okay. Um, Got it. But everything we do, we do well, so that's the problem. <laughs> okay. It's hard to be excellent in all right. things, right? <laughs> I got oh, it. no. <laughs> so for folks that don't know, uh, your, your husband was, was what in the police department? Uh, he actually worked for Green County Sheriff's yeah, Office. Uh, sorry, in Green County. No, you're yes, fine. For police. Uh, he was just a <laughs> patrol deputy. Uh, okay. He had worked at Willard previously. And uh, in 17, he decided to make the shift over, and there was only a jail position open. So it was fun to say my husband was in jail. Um, at the time, my brother also worked for a prison, so had both of them locked up. But... Um, <laughs> So, and then about six months to the date, uh, December of 17 is when he got the call to go mm. to patrol. Mm. And um, so he was a patrol road deputy. Now, on the police side, yes, sir. does, and maybe your husband talked to you about this, uh, are, are there maybe steps that people want to take? They go through certain steps to, to maybe get into something higher. I know like with teachers, they try to do that. And at the very end, they want to be a principal or something like that. Did he have any aspirations? And do you guys have aspirations to, to move into other departments? Well, I, I know like just professionally speaking, you want to make your resume, you know, some people choose to go for like the tactical route or investigative route or community services route or the training route. And there's a lot of different avenues to help develop yourself as an officer. County has the same, like different organizations. You may you may go into the narcotics division. You may go into jail. You may patrol. You may be canine and uh, uh, the SWAT teams and all those other things. So there's a lot of uh, opportunities, even on the lowest, uh, if you want to say the lowest promotion, like the officer level and deputy level. They're able to move around and get a lot of experience doing other things, which I think is pretty critical. Um, because as you start looking for those opportunities to proceed and advance your career as promotions, um, you want someone who's done a lot of those things. Uh, and so I, we have a lot of those opportunities in PD, and obviously in county does the same as well, and we do a lot together. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a, there's a lot of ways to develop yourself to move forward if you want to do that. Now, Green County was part of one of the TV shows, yeah. I believe. <laughs> so... Uh, what was that like? W were you exposed to any of that? Uh, a little bit. Aaron was not a followed uh, deputy, but he often got called as like backup and stuff. And it's actually funny, the very first time he was on a scene, he um, realized he was in camera, so he took a step back. Then the camera yeah. zoomed out, and he took another step back, and the camera <laughs> zoomed out again. It was three times, and he finally just went back to his car. <laughs> He didn't like being on TV, um, but he there was a few a few episodes that he did get involved in, and it was just no then getting there, out of there it. There are some that I know that really like being on TV, <laughs> and they were on almost every one of them. I don't know if he's still a Green County deputy or not, but uh, he really liked being on, if you knew who I'm talking about. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, uh, that was interesting. Uh, you know, I don't know if they're going to ever do one with fire. We'll have to ask Brian. Ooh, that would be nice. I don't know what they call it. Um, uh, nap 24 7 what comes to mind i probably shouldn't say live so oh probably um, <laughs> um, but yeah it, it, you know what's interesting about um live pd or cops or any of those yeah everyone thinks it's cool except for the ones working because then the call volume goes through the roof because every civilian wants to be on tv and Great. make it on the show so oh, our work okay. volume increases dramatically because i remember uh when people show up hey is the cameras here oh no i don't need you and yeah, I'm like good. cool <laughs> thank you, you is that what really people did was was create calls just thinking they could be on TV? Oh, yeah. I know my experience um, was that I'm way. Sure. And other people I've yeah. heard talk about that. They just, it's silly. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that that's very interesting. <laughs> that, that's very interesting. I thought sometimes they didn't, they, or they, they announced that they're going to be coming and filming, but they never said when. Sure. Right, yeah. And so people are just doing that because mm -hmm. they think it's, this is the, the, the week? Mm -hmm. Well, with cops, I don't know, but with live PD, it was always on Friday yeah. nights or yeah. whatever night it was. Kind of knew when it was going to happen, yeah. Yes, and it was live. Like, I think there was, a, like, a delay, a 10-minute delay <laughs> sure. or something. But, 
I always enjoyed it because I could poke fun. Be like, I've seen you on TV. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, that's probably a lot of fun to do, to do something was. like that. <laughs> so what do you do now? I mean, I know that you're part of this, uh, this uh, organization, but is that what you do full-time or what else do you do? I am full-time mom. Um, I got to financially, I got to stay home, awesome. and so I you. quit in June of 19, and um, I haven't looked back, but, you know, I, I pour my time into Grand County 100 Club, uh, Missouri Concerns of Police Survivors, um, and then I also, every Wednesday just about, you'll find me at the Quartermaster's office at Grand County, uh, which is a lot of fun because everyone goes and sees the Quartermaster, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. everyone comes through, <laughs> so it's a lot of fun, um, and like I said, they haven't left my, so no one really has, but... Um, the Green County family has never left my side, so it's always fun to go back every Wednesday and go have lunch, and I may just sit there and drink coffee, but <laughs> sometimes I do stuff. <laughs> it's always a good thing. If yeah. folks are listening or watching right now and say, I, I got to get a hold of you, how do they? Um, with uh, Green County 100 Club, we have, I did not come prepared, we do have an email. Um, We'll give you we'll give you yeah. a second to, to, okay. to take okay. a look at it. Let me important. look. Um, I mean, you could look us up. Our website is going to be Green County 100 Club org, I believe. Uh, it's Green County 100 Club com actually, and from there you can contact us. Um, we've got an email there as well as a phone number um, to yeah to contact us. Sounds and, good. And check us out. Well, Kim, thanks for joining us and uh, telling your story. You and absolutely. Yeah. Thank and, uh, you guys for letting having us, us. Get to know who you are. Yeah. And again, this is a, a great benefit here for, for folks. It, do you have a number, uh, an office number, if somebody needs to contact you? Uh, I do not, because I'm a full-time mom. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's right. But if they needed to contact me directly, they are absolutely welcome to contact Ring County One Heart Club. I'm okay. on Facebook as well, Kim Roberts. Go. Um, that's an easy way to get a hold of me. Very, so. very easy. Yeah. All right. Thanks for doing this. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Yep. All right. Thank you so much. Kim Roberts, part of the, she's the secretary for the Green County 100 as we are just about to get ready for the second period of action. What do you think, uh, what do you think, what do you think the fire guys were talking about in the locker room? Uh, probably just hanging out. <laughs> I don't think they're stressed. Okay, so I will give you the opportunity to respond. I asked a question. Oh, you, yeah, and, and I said, the guy with no mic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who has the best barbecue, police or fire? The fire department does. And why? Uh, like, we have the best everything. Uh, I, will, okay. I will tell you, let's talk about barbecue in the fire department one time. <laughs> I, won't, I won't say location or anything, but we were, we were in a barricade situation, <laughs> and we were in close proximity. And I remember some firemen pulled out lawn chairs and a grill. Yeah, just start cooking. Yeah, just starts watching us. I'm like, yeah. you got to be kidding me. Well, that yeah, was just freezing. Just watching you guys work, huh? It was great. It was one of my favorite memories. We are underway in the second period again. <laughs> it is a 16-minute period here. Here comes Jimmy Ramsey. Jimmy the Jet Ramsey. Working the left side of the goal there. See if he can get it across the middle. Shaw gets it away, plays it up. Tried to get over to the Merklin. T. Shaw's going to bring it up. Fisher's back on defense. Oh. Was able to chip it away. Let's yep. see if he takes it. Oh, oh are we going to get a one-on-one? -on -one? Oh, yes, he, he is. is. Oh, oh, just no. wide. Just a bit outside. I think Fisher gassed himself because he immediately went to the bench yeah. to get a trade off. So we can understand that fully. No, I, I bet you guys do have better barbecue. We've got some guys that can they can cook some barbecue. Now, oh, oh was, Shaw just oh. lays somebody out. Yeah, that's gonna be a penalty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A penalty right in front of Hardman. Oh. See, good nature, they're fine, let them play. Oh, he tried to get back to the bench, but they're gonna, they're gonna take him to the box. Yeah, Hardman's not gonna let that fly. Well, Tom mm -hmm. Shaw's gonna go, we're gonna get a power play now for the police and a chance to take the lead here. Naughty, naughty. Faceoff should come down on the fire end of the ice. Yeah. And that's where it will be. Cisneros is taking the, hey, I learned something. You know why the referee drops the puck? This is not a joke, I learned this. <laughs> why is that? Because they actually used to drop it on the ice and place it by hand. Wow. Their hands used to get whacked. Yeah. Just makes sense. Yeah. Work smarter, not harder, refs. 
I'll give you another trivia question. Did you know that the referee drops the puck for the first drop of the puck in the game and never does it after that? Really? It's the referee to drop it the first time and then the linesman does it the rest of the game. Then the linesman does it the rest of the game? Yep. I did not know that. I did not know that either. I was trying oh. to be witty and try to look up a whole bunch of stats before oh. coming up here. Ooh, they cleared that out. out by the fire department. Oh, we got one on. Philly B's got the way, the good pass gets down the ice. He's got to get back now. Play. Gets back pretty good. You know, skating all the way down the ice, that just takes it out of you. I bet. Especially Easter's going to come back. off. Oh, oh. loop the dude. Oh. Papa's got the puck. If Papa scores, I would have went crazy, just so we know. Oh, yeah. That's Jeff Elliott. I don't know. Oh, you got to watch out for that blue line, Steve. Yeah. He'll trip you up, buddy. That's offside there. I wonder if he hurt himself. He's getting looks up like kind of getting, slow. Oh, looks like he gets up pretty good. Hey, it looks like uh, Kaylee Friend's going to come back out on the ice. That's yep. good. Looks like she's skating again. It's good for the police team. It's a great turnout, too. We got everybody standing room yep. only around here. Sold out house. Grease Haber's going to get the puck. 40 seconds left in the power play. Let's see what they do with it. Grease Haber clears it out. Friends going down. We got Keeney chasing after it. Keeney. Friends actually get away from it. Let's see who cleared that out. Louder ball. Oh. Number 12, PD goes down. Keeney's going to try to get to it. Friend with some good defense there. Yep. All right, if you were in a Mighty Ducks movie, which Mighty Ducks movie would you be in, man? Would you want to be in the original? Would you be like uh, the international I, team? What are we doing here? I think I'm going original, the bad boys there, you know, the, the ragtag group. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. the seems, Bash Brothers or whatever Yeah, it seems were. a little more fitting, you know, for me. I got to agree, original, that would work. You can't, oh. you can't deny the flying V. You can't. PD been working on a little flying gear. Are we going to see it this tonight? I can't. Man, again, I can't, can't tell the secrets. Nah, I can't divulge secrets. But if you see him build up behind Dude, the net, you know his arms that. up, <laughs> I'd lose it for that. We got the heart of Gordon Bombay. Yeah, dude. So one thing I'll tell you, Scott, who of course is keeping us on the air back at home a couple hours away from here, he's wearing his Ducks jersey right now. Oh yeah, uh, so is shout out to Brady Yates. Uh, his oh, daughter, yeah. oh, his daughter's got a mighty Jeff Ducks jersey on tonight too. Okay, we're almost halfway through this game. We'll wait for another couple of minutes and I'm gonna ask you a question. Okay. Oh. Good defense there by Fire. Looked like that was Chief Houston. Got it away. PD's going to bring it back, though. Oh, it's a good, good shot. save. Man, Dan is blocking everything. Yeah, he is. My goodness. Doing a job in goal. Chief Houston's going to bring it up. Oh. It's up to Jake Adams. He wasn't ready for it, but it looks like Fisher's going to get it. Easter goes to the ice, trying to control it, but doesn't. Good block there by Shaw. See if they can get it across the middle again. Oh, Scott Hill. Oh, is good. Got to get back uh, on defense. Here we go, Chief Houston. You going to try to work one on one? No. Oh, good stop by Brian. Yeah. Okay, we're close enough. We're halfway almost through this game. In both of your estimation, right now, who's the MVP? Who's the MVP? <laughs> I think it's been pretty balanced. Are you talking I mean, about for each team or overall? Let's go with an overall right now. I'll tell you my choice, but I'll wait for your. Reese Haber's got an assist on both fire goals right now. I, I think he, you you have an argument there because we're so focused on him being a good player. He is. It allows uh, the openings on the other side. He uh. 
skates very well, as you could say, but I don't know. I still feel like we might be a little early to make that yeah. call. Well, it's definitely early, but but my running right now is Zachary. Is Dan Zachary? Yes. Oh, that was going to be my second. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how many saves he has, how many shots on goal he's taken, well, but uh, he's doing the good. He, he has that, 14, so he uh, saved see. 12 out of 14. Yep. That uh, that first like three minutes of that first period, man, he was yeah. <laughs> he was just all over the. It looked like he was a ninja, a hockey ninja. So 10.38 to go in this second period in a 2-2 game. controlling the puck. Philly D has it. One oh. thing you need to know about Philly D is he's got a glorious mullet. Oh, I like that. And he harnesses the power of the mullet really well. Going to play it up to Juicy. Try to throw it across to Nielsen. Fulton had a good block. He's waiting at the line. Got a little bit of time. Let's see what they do with it. Is it Higgins? Looks like Higgins is going to get off to Bolton there. He loses the puck. Davis is going to try to play it up forward. He plays it up to Keeney. He's got it along the board. Tries to play it up to Poole. Good save there by the PD goalie. So to recap, the goals all coming in the first period. Keeney with a goal, and then Fisher to tie it up for the PD. Merkling gives PD the lead, and then Houston for the fire ties it up late in the period, and we're 2-2 still. Maybe they just do get it. Played out. I can't see who's going to get it. Uh, looks like that was Baby Elliot. Is it the Web Sports channel on YouTube? We had someone asking, and we just want to clarify if they're yep. trying to find it online. WSRlive.com. There we go. Baby Elliot's got the puck, trying to control it here. Baby Elliot? Yeah, that's uh, Papa Jeff Elliot's boy. Oh, okay. Jeff is who kind of talked me into starting and really helped me. Um, he helped me get a bunch of donated gear from the back locker here at yeah, he's Jordan a, Valley, man. And he taught he, me a lot of stuff. He tries to play the tough old man, but. Oh! Someone oh, just lost the stick. stick out of the hands. Here's the problem well, with that. What's going to happen with that? Is it a delayed penalty or what? Can't tell. So yeah, I can't. Looking over. Looks like yep. it is going to be two minutes for slashing. Grease Haber's going to go to the box here, it looks like. He took uh, he took Carlson's stick and played whack-a-mole with it and yeah. slammed it up against the ice. Second power play for the police on the slashing call. Fire's going to go back. we got a good lineup here. I'd still like to see a slap shot from the blue line from old Philly D. We'll see what happens. Busy. Fire's going to try to clear it out. Two minutes for slashing for the fire department. Gets it clear. Easter's going to play it back. I hope that we're frustrating the fire team enough that they start making mistakes like that regularly. Because let's just be honest. You guys whoop us. <laughs> but Yeah, this is a much closer game than I myself anticipated. To this be is the with closest you. game, well, I think, of the four yeah. games. And as the kids say, I don't want to throw shade. <laughs> But this is the only sport you guys beat us at, huh? So yeah, yeah, we got we need to we need to hold on to it. It's gonna go all the way back all around the around. boards. One sixteen to go on the power play. Back in the police end of the ice. Gonna dump it off. They got some fresh legs going, so we'll see what happens here. Good pass up the middle. We need to get in position. We were out changing players, so we don't really have our lineup set yet. Adams is gonna take it off to Merklin. Yeah, Jimmy right across the middle. middle. Zachers Good covers stop. it up. So he filled in for us a few times on C League. And he has such great energy. We, this yeah. poor guy came in, and it's a no contact league. But he told me, he's like, if anyone skates in my circle, I'm wrecking them. <laughs> I, <And this>, I, <laughs> I play in the pipes and drums with him, and I believe that statement. This poor <laughs> kid came in the middle, and he just threw a shoulder at <laughs> him, and he went flying. It was awesome. Got a goalie change for fire. 
I don't know if this is oh. set, but Tim Shaw is in there now. Oh, oh save. great save, great save. Man, he took that on the face, didn't he? <laughs> I can't tell if it's off his face mask or off the chest. It's getting chippy underneath oh, the ball. Oh, a little bit of... Oh, oh, oh! Oh, they're going to wave it off. Hold on. They're Hold waving on. it off. What? They're waving the goal off. Why? Boo! Oh. So two of our guys were getting chippy in front of the goal. Yeah. And now they're being talked to by yep. the ref. I uh, can't tell. That's no. Jake Adams and who's 32? Who's Is it 32? Uh, Chad Davis. They were down there just having a time, playing yeah. a little game. I wouldn't think it was rough. They're just kind no. of chippy. No. Let them play a little bit. Yeah. Oh, uh, they're going to yeah. They're gonna talk about it. They're good to go, it looks like. I didn't think that warranted wiping off a goal, though. We'll bring that on a Hardman. Getting old. So we're still 2-2. 26 seconds remaining in the power play. Man, oh, man. That would have been great energy. I think we're going to try to get it back right here, though. Let's go. Come on, boys. That's going to clear out. Yeah. 15 seconds left. Can't tell. Uh, that was number 14, Andy Merritt from Fire, who cleared that out. Craig Fisher trying to do it by himself. Sent all the way around the board again. Juicy Let's sends it around the board. It. Scott Hill's going to take this shot. Oh. oh. Power Just play wide. Over. Back behind the net. Back out in front. Oh, Papa's going to come try to take it up the ice. Power play is clear now. Back to full strength. Good defense by Higgins down there, chipping it away. So on that last play, it was probably a player in the crease that stopped the play or uh, interference on the goaltender, something to that effect. Now we got Juicy. He's going to try Man, i got to find here. out about this whole yeah. thing. I'm sure we all got nicknames for reasons. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is actually, it's a good one. Like, not on his part. Well, uh, so... Here we go. Three savers here on defense. Went around the board. Let's see if uh, Philly D can stop it over there. Tyler Poole over there. Gets it back. We're trying to be a shift Gets change. it up to Yates. Man. Merklin came off the house and got caught up. Yep. Here comes Grease Haver. Plays it up to Nielsen. There's Roby, one of our newer guys. Great Try young play officer. Try to the middle of the pool, but now they got comes back out off. to Grease Haver. Five twenty-four to go in this period. Still a two-two game. Again. Keeney and then Fisher to tie it up. Merkling gives Petey the lead and then Houston. Who's uh, the coach over there on the fire side? Uh, Who's the fancy man in the suit? I can't tell if that's uh, retired Chief Carden or not, to be honest with you. Uh, you can tell when they're retired because they have <laughs> glorious yeah, beard. They, they, yeah, they go full no shave, right? I think that's uh, Chief Carden. Okay. If it is, we're talking to him at the second period. Oh, of I cannot wait. I'd love to hear this. No, I cannot wait. I know that uh, is Chief Carden. To the corner, oh, lost it. Gets. They're going to get down there quick, trying to get on this. Easter's going to try to get back down, get the puck. Chief Houston has it, plays it out front. Our coach over there is uh, Captain Reese. Reese is one of, the, one of the few when these conversations started happening that got the team together. Then handed it off uh, this last year or so. Oh, looks fancy in a suit. Goes off Horning skate back to PD. I think that's oh, number 98 is Horning. That is Chris Horning, firefighter from Station 2. Yep, from Engine 2 on A shift. Andy Marriage is going to try to take it up. Is that like A team? And then you have B team huh? and C team? Or? Yeah. Well, just to you put all your good firefighters on A shift? <laughs> Just the way we get numbered. Or lettered, I guess. We're going to get a call. That? All right, question, guys. Also hosts the Spirit 
the spirit so, or traveling hockey club for some of the region's best youth players with teams at five different levels. This organization you know what, let me, I'm going to formulate this question. I want to figure <laughs> out the best way. I want to get the best answer out of this question. So uh, let me, let me, for, give me a second. I'll All form, right. formulate it. Oh, and we have to revisit the other question. Remind me, do you want me to skip to it? No, let's go to it. What is it? <laughs> we had a question. Since we have cops and live PD, what would the show call that call that follows the firemen around? Is that like Bluey or what is that? Oh. Reno 911? Yeah. <laughs> Tacoma FD. Paw Patrol? I don't know. Paw Patrol. They kind of did it with uh, No, seriously, the, do they have that? Uh, it was kind of under the same premise Wasn't it Rescue 911 or something? It, uh, it was kind of under the same premise as the people that did uh, the live PD or oh, whatever okay. that was. Uh, okay. They had EMS and fire. They did it in New Orleans. Oh, really? Yeah. Jimmy Ramsey working hard, trying to send it. Oh, good oh, just there. wide. Good save. We don't need to get frustrated. It's 2-2, two -two, which is better than what we expected, so we got to keep playing hard here. Davis plays it back up. Nielsen. Ooh. Shoved Jimmy down, but that's all right. He gets back up. Should be a little contact. Tanner Westerfield's going to bring, bring it up. Let's oh. go one-on-one oh. on one with Jimmy. Let's see what happens. Oh, oh, oh triple down. Did we get a penalty he shot? Did. He's going to be tripping. Oh, penalty On shot. The delay. We got a score. Ramsey's down. Davis is trying to check on him. So he's got a stick up in his skate, and it looked like he hit his shoulder. So when he hit, if I'm not mistaken, it looked like he got his shoulder down a little, and, and that'd be bad. He's 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 grimacing pretty good, guys. Yeah. So the the official called a penalty shot. A goal was scored, but I'm believing this will be a penalty shot and not a goal. We'll see if we get. He's up. He's, he's leaving under his own power, which is good. Yeah. Skating. Well, but he's skating gonna, good, moving. He's going to take the. Penalty shot, though. Uh, they took the puck. Can he take it yeah. or can someone else? Uh, he, If he's not able to, somebody else can. But we have a penalty shot coming looks up. Looks like he's staying out, out there to the take it. On the south side of the rink. Yep, that's what it looks like. So Ramsey will take it. Uh, they're, they're going to call the play dead because the goaltender mm. did touch it. So this. It'll be a penalty shot. Jimmy Ramsey. There we go. Triple beak. Maybe triple beak. Oh, beak. yeah. Oh. oh. Big time play there by yeah. Fire Goalie. Well, we're still tied 2-2. That was there. big. Yeah. Call the old Gordon Bombay <laughs> triple beak. <laughs> a little, little drama ensued right there. <laughs> Okay, guys, I have formulated my question, and I don't know if you both know this or not, but when a 911 call comes in, which agency gets the call first? Uh, kind of depends on what the call is. What the call is. So there's a 911 dispatcher and a fire dispatcher, uh, So and there's also a call taker, if you will. So depending on the call, it would go, yeah. if it's a police matter, it'll go to the police Park. department. Yeah. Fire department matter will go to the fire department dispatcher. So let's take a call wreck. Call taker gets it, there's an accident. He's gonna put it out, he or she's gonna put it out, and then all, all agencies will respond until mm -hmm. we're told otherwise not to. Sometimes if they get there first, like hey, that's not a big deal, they call us off or vice versa, we mm -hmm. may need it. We may need them because there's uh, fluids on the ground that need to be cleaned up or whatever. Yeah. Uh, uh, they, also, they do us a solid by using their big trucks to uh, block traffic so we yeah. can so work the scene. We try to okay. get there to, even if it's a, a small matter, we try to get there with our apparatus to try to yeah. block it, if you will, to provide safety for people that are working near that. And it's sometimes it's just good to have, because they, they typically will have more medical training than we do. Um, and so it's good to have them just as a um, on scene to clarify, hey, uh, this is kind of what we need to be looking at. Hey, let's get an ambulance and route as well if we need to. And, and some different layers there, that's kind of nice. So 
Here's might be a two on one. Oh, good move. Oh, it's around him. Oh! I can't tell who, number four, Craig Fisher. Fisher. PD takes the lead again. That's his second goal of the game. Man, he keeps playing like that. Yeah. Whew. I got to meet Craig's dad before the game. He looks just like him. Yeah, it looks like man. recruitment is working, huh? Yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm going to have to tell our recruiter to start <laughs> going north more. <laughs> so Fisher will get the goal at 14.30 of the period. And it's 3-2, Police. Police. Four assisted by seven for the police. Four from seven. That's Scott Hill with the assist. Also, thanks for reminding you if you're taking part in our intermission juggle puck contest. Second time now that the police have taken the lead. Getting down to a minute left in this period. Guys, with this last minute, I'll ask you another question as the puck gets shot in to the fire zone. Trying to keep that pressure on for that last minute. Yep. Oh, he's getting caught up a little bit, but. Oh. Oh, they're not calling it icing. We'll see what happens. I know that they would. Oh, almost oh. too many men. Ooh, that was close. Well, we'll save the question for a little later. Shots are 18-18 right now getting exciting because it's getting down there. They're going to try and keep it in the zone. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Shot He's comes gonna back out to get it. Tries to play it Intercepted up. Intercepted by ladder ball. He's going to just kind of casually skate it. He's got help on the right. Cool comes over and gets it. Going to take it. Let the play it back behind the out. net. Three seconds to go. Shots 18-18. Elijah Wilson faces six in the second period, two period total of 18. And a combination of Dan Zacker and Tim Shaw. Mm -hmm. So Zacker faces five. You can, you can talk to Chief. Oh. Tim Shaw. Oh, I'm talking to your Chief. <laughs> faces. Right. Hey, Chief. Hey, how are you? Not too bad. How are you? Good. Hey, this is fun, isn't it? Yeah. It's a good atmosphere. It's the most uh, competitive game we've had in five years. Yeah. So, Chief, I thought we were going to have you in the middle of the uh, period, but uh, we can talk to you now. Either oh, way. I'll, whatever you want. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what. Why I don't you come back? Why don't you stay here until Kelly gets up here, and then, uh, okay. and then right. we'll talk to you. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, hey, the first time in a while the Fires had the lead in this game, in, in the, this series. I mean the police have had. Uh, the police, yes. Yeah. Just so used fire? to saying it. Like, I'm so, I'm so, so used to. I'm so, I'm so used to saying the Fires. Comes off the, the tongue so the, nice. But the police have it, so that's great. Well, so they've been practicing a lot better, and, you know, we recruited some new guys. So yeah. We've heard. <laughs> we've heard about your recruitment process. So two goals from our rookie. Yeah, yeah. You're like, so I was joking earlier, and I'm like, is the first question on the PD interview, do you play hockey? <laughs> no, because we also have basketball, <laughs> yeah, softball. Yeah, yeah. We do recruit athletes, though. It's, wow. it's, a, team uh, yes. it's a team sport. It just <laughs> makes sense. Hey, it honestly, it makes sense. Absolutely. No, I'm happy for them. Athletic man, people do good in this field. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. There you go. Well, uh, one of the things that we'll touch on uh, er, during the uh, – what we're going to do is, in case people don't realize, is middle of the third period we're going to stop. Uh, fans are going to know what kind of uh, prizes they've won, and during that break, we'll, we'll, we'll okay. talk to you. But, but still, one thing I do want to talk to you about is uh, you, you're going to mention about recruitment. Right. Now, Springfield is such a, a town that it's big, but it's small. Right. And so the police presence, some can argue it's not here. Some can argue it's absolutely here. Uh, what, what's your response to something like that? You know, we're... There's really no gauge for the number of officers per po you know per citizen, but a general gauge is two per thousand. You know, so 170,000 people. We should have about 340 officers. Our goal is to have a little more. We've got authorized for 367. So I think we're. I mean, we could always say we want more, but sure. we've got the right number of folks. And I think what you mentioned about whether people don't think there's enough or there's enough. 
depends on where you're at. <laughs> and if there's issues in a particular part of the city, you are going to see an increased police presence. And if there's not, you may not see anybody for a while. Now, what do you say, because there have been several reports that have come out, and I know it's statistic-wise, and it doesn't represent Springfield, but there have been several reports that have come out and say, oh, Springfield's just the, the worst place to live. It's all this crime. But it's, it's, it's different. It, it, what do you say to things like that? So first off, I tell people, look at what we provide for crime stats and compare us to us. A lot of those third-party uh, web-based comparisons are usually two years old. That's the first thing. Secondly, uh, you have to look at the formula what they do. I looked at one of those, and they counted every crime the same. So shoplifting is the same as a murder. So I tell people, man, look at what we've got. Compare us to us this year to last year. And uh, the other not bad. We don't have a lot of stranger on stranger crime. Our violent crime is people that know each other. We have a lot of domestics. We have a drug-related crime, crime uh, criminal people involved in criminal activity. Um, that's what drives that violent crime. And then the other thing, we do have a lot of theft. We have a lot of uh, drug abuse, drug use, drug, drug addiction, which sure. affects our crime rate. But the average citizen really doesn't have anything to worry about. You know, if you're not involved in a bad domestic relationship, you're not involved in criminal activity, you're not involved in drugs. Uh, it's a great place to live. Plus, you also have uh, a lot of the shows that come here to, to film, and uh, so you, you get to be on TV every once in a while. Not that it matters. Yeah. But no, we we've, we've had cops here four times, you know, over the over the last 15 years because they like like the environment, like uh, like what goes on here, and like showcasing the quality of people that we have working here. Brian, let's see if we can get oh. Kelly on. We'll get Kelly oh. on. No, Chief, stay oh. here. Well, you can stay, stay here. On. Yeah. All right. Are you sure Kelly wants to come on now? When, yeah. Are we there. sure we want to give Chief Carden the microphone? <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. Okay. I guarantee he's wanting to shoot up right now. All right. Scott is saying hi. To You're wanting to shoot up, aren't you? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. It's hard being on the bench. It is tough. I Say hi to Scott there. We got in the booth. That guy can do some magic with some broadcast, can he? Absolutely. He's three hours away, and uh, he's doing all, all of his magic. And and I see that uh, we got to figure out how to get ourselves all in the in the scene. There we go. We're, now yeah, we're in it. Yeah. We're there. Everybody's so, there. Yeah. Kelly, you were one of the originals of yes. this. Yes. And, and I can see you've taken retirement very well with this uh, thing going like on Like Chief here. said, we're contractually obligated to grow a beard as soon as we leave the department. So uh, police and fire, we, we <laughs> all just stop everybody. shaving. <laughs> <laughs> I think we played on one of the first teams way back when. We did. Rink open. Yep, absolutely. That was, uh, there was three firefighters, yep. uh, Tom Beckenholt, Phil Noah, and me. Yeah. Really? And uh, that was the beginning of... Uh, the, the nexus of the actual fire department team. We played one charity game, borrowed like five guys and had a team from St. Louis come down, fire department team, and they beat us badly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but every year we got a couple of more players, a couple more players. We started out, uh, the year that the rink opened, it was a really bad freeze. And me and a guy named Jason Strong were out skating on ponds. And we said, well, let's go to the rink and check that out. And, uh, and we were in welder's gloves and wearing <laughs> coveralls on the ice out well, here. We didn't know anything about hockey. And then it just grew. And it grew and grew and grew. And then, you know what, five years ago? Five years ago, I was telling a story earlier. I'm at the city picnic, and Al yep. comes up and goes, hey, we ought to get a police fire game together. For we we've yeah. been, we have yeah. been wanting to do it forever. And uh, I grew up in yeah. Detroit, so oh, I love yeah. hockey. Yeah. I'm yeah. a Red Wings fan for forever. Uh, never could skate well enough to play very well on the As ice. As you can tell, that's not yeah. something that's required. <laughs> <Definitely not. laughs> but no, I just I took it to my guys and said, hey, you guys, who wants to do this? And, uh, you know, Al actually put together skating lessons yeah, for yeah. the first group. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, people had never skated before. So to come from that to having a really competitive oh, hockey game. Oh, this is a great this game. This is great. This man. Is I'm, a I'm great really proud game. of the guys. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. And they have gotten better. Of course, we still play in the league. A lot of us still right. play in the adult league. Right. And, you know, now we have, we, the fire department has always had, well, for a long time, had two teams, one in an upper level and one lower. And now we have police officers in that upper level playing with the firefighters, and we've got two teams in the lower level. I mean, yeah, you're looking at, you know, you're looking at close to 50 guys playing hockey from yeah. the two departments. And that's not counting the guys that just aren't playing anymore. I mean, you can see all these jerseys out in the crowd. Those are all ex 
uh, players that sure. just, you know, for whatever reason couldn't play anymore. Once you know? they retire and you recruit new people yeah, like this year, we yeah. bring rookies to come in. So yep. we were talking right before you got here, yep. right? Uh, Fisher's uh, one of our rookie officers, yep. played a little bit of hockey in his life yeah, yeah. and uh, making a difference. So. And it is a great, it's a great way for a new officer or a new firefighter to have something that they're a part of, like kind of right away. It's like just being on a team. It's like, oh, okay, I, I meet a bunch of guys, make friends. It's, it's almost like going to a new school when you get on the department. Right. You don't know everybody except for the people in your, your rookie class. And so to get to go out and do something is is really a lot of fun. It's a team within a team. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. I mean, we were talking about the earlier police, policing and firing, fire fighters, man. It's a team environment. We recruit athletes for that reason. Absolutely. You've, you've grown up in a team environment. It, it transitions really well. but. New guys, old guys, and we have our, our non-sworn and our sworn, so they don't, you know they get to interact together mm -hmm. and have fun together. Yeah. And uh, coming out here, and then you get family and friends together, which uh, that's that's the part I really love. Well, the, the the turnout in in fans from the city of Springfield since the day that we started this has been unbelievable. This town has turned out to support not just these two teams, but the charity uh, from the very first year where we had hundreds of people standing in line. They couldn't get in couldn't to get now. In. That, it's was, that was amazing. Couldn't get in. The support from the public has been amazing the entire time. And the Green County 100 Club, you know, that's what we do this for. Mm -hmm. I, I appreciate the police officers, firefighters volunteering their time and, and putting this together and, and risking life and limb in some cases, <laughs> as you <laughs> right, can see. Right. But, uh, you know, it's for a great cause, uh, the Green County 100 Club, which uh, uh, tragically over the last couple of years has had to, had to provide a couple of those those $25,000 checks yeah. to uh, to family members. but. We hope it's never needed, but it's great that it's there and uh, shows community support, gives everybody a chance to come together and, and support those uh, who haven't uh, suffered that yet, yeah. but uh, you know, make sure that we're there in case they do. Yeah, well, and, and I'm sorry, go ahead. I was Steve. just gonna say, I, uh, we were talking to Kim Roberts uh, earlier in the uh, other intermission, yeah. and uh, I said, what's the goal? And she said, the goal is not to ever give out this money again. Right. Absolutely, no, it is. It, we've talked about that from day one. I've been here 14 years and, and the, the fund is, it's grown a little bit, but it started about 100,000. There's 250, 300,000 in there, and, and uh, the goal is to grow it and not use it, which seems, you know, seems really weird, yeah. but but that is that is absolutely the goal to have it there and then go. Nope, we didn't have to write a check this year. Well, we talked about the fans that uh, that show up and support every year and, and all the different games that we play for the charity, but the the corporate sponsors that show up and and donate to Green County 100 and really do a lot of legwork. I mean, they're another part of the backbone that makes this really successful and makes it to where we can help those families that need it. This, of course, is a, is a fun game, and, and it's a game where uh, both police and fire get together. But, okay, jokingly, I have to ask. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, and I've uh, asked earlier, I asked Brian and Kevin, and I said, all right, who has the best barbecue? Well, all right, so I got to <laughs> – now, we made some individual cookers, but think about it. All right, what do firefighters do when they're not out risking their lives fighting a fire? They're back at the firehouse cooking, all right, playing Xbox, sitting in the easy chair. So I've got to give it to them. After, you go to after any, workout. Any, <laughs> after workouts. Any firehouse in the state is going to have great food. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, you know, cooking is a part of our culture. <laughs> from from the minute you get hired and go out in the station, you are going to be told, hey, you're part of the cooking rotation. You're going to have cooking lessons. We're not eating a bad meal just because you're a bad cook. We are going to make sure that there's good food on the table. We all pitch in our own money. We all cook. And, and so, yeah, that's that's just, they don't have the opportunity to do that. And so, yeah, we definitely kind of lap the field on that We one. barely have so. time to eat sometimes, let alone cook a meal. Yeah. So the guys are out running, yeah. running it, it, and keep people safe. We have a, we, you know, the way our job is set up, we have that, that group mentality so much. And, uh, and, you know, so often police officers will come to the fire stations all the time, you know, whether it's a station that has a fuel pump or just the need for the restroom or something like that. And, uh, you know, there's always coffee on and they're always welcome for meals. I mean, that, that happens all the time. So. Yeah, we have a great uh, friendly sibling rivalry. You know, I, I joke with firefighters, uh, Chief Bank, I joke all the time, but there's nobody we'd rather hang out with and uh, and, and be a part of than the fraternity of yeah. policemen and fire. Yeah. Okay. So I have to ask, if a civilian comes in and and says, hey, I just want to talk to you guys. Uh, will we get coffee and food? If you came at the right time, there's a really good chance <laughs> you will, absolutely. Uh, y y yeah, absolutely, we'll get offered a cup of coffee. Um, and if you just want to come and talk and learn about the fire station, I, I mean, that tour is there for the asking. You know, as long as they're not busy with some sort of training or some other task that, that has to get done, they will break somebody off of that group 
to go give a child a tour or any citizen a tour of the station or, or you know, answer any questions that they have. Help them cook dinner, help them wash the fire truck. There you go. <laughs> right. We're always looking for, for that labor. Sure. Give, them the, give them the controller and joystick and jump on the Xbox. <laughs> there you go. For a little bit. Yeah. So this is Chief <laughs> Paul Williams, in case you're wondering, folks, and you see Kelly Carden right there. I know that they have ride-alongs for mm -hmm. police. Do they have any kind of ride-alongs for fire? They do. It's not on the fire trucks proper. Uh, we just saw them for sleepover. A, for a <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like a summer party. <laughs> now, um, you, you can request and do ride-alongs with battalion chiefs. There is a program for that. Uh, obviously, for a variety of reasons, they we don't do ride-alongs on the actual fire truck. That'd be, that'd be like us. You can ride along with the patrol officer, but you can't ride along with the canine unit or the SWAT team or, oh. or you know, detectives. So patrol officers, absolutely. So kind of what Kelly's talking about, same thing. You can go out and experience it. I encourage people. It's an eye-opening experience for citizens yeah. to, to sit in a car with an officer for six, eight, ten hours. Now, I know they also have like a police academy, a civilian police academy. Do they have any kind of that for fire? Um, not as formalized a program as the uh, police department has, but we have a variety of other opportunities for civilians to interact, citizens to come and interact with the police or with the fire department. And so um, there's no uh, there's no academy. There's the, the citizens of Springfield. There's leadership Springfield, things right. like that. Where they have like a, a day in the life, you know, kind of okay. spend a day. But ours is a structured 10 week, one day a week program. We host it every fall. Uh, usually limit to about 25 citizens and you come and I said it's like looking behind the curtain at Oz I mean you get to come see everything that goes on in the police department officers teach all the classes they're they're proud they're passionate about what they do and it's a it's a good thing for people to, who want to know what goes on behind uh, those those calls that they hear on the radio okay in the last couple of minutes that we have here before we start period three uh, Kelly and, and chief uh, I need to ask you what can you say is the craziest call you've had to be on or uh, had or heard about that you can actually tell us about that is, uh, I guess, PG-ish? <laughs> okay, I've been doing this for 44 years, so I, I don't know where to start. Really. <laughs> yeah, that's, Seriously, I mean, uh, it'll take the next two minutes just to think about the right one. And um, you put the PG thing on there. I mean, yeah, there's lots of things yeah. police officers well, firefighters see that sure, are yeah, crazy, sure. but we, we don't really want to talk yeah. about it. Sure, sure. And, and the thing is, is that so often we're there after the fact. The crazy thing happens, and then we're there to help. Yeah. And so that's generally what the case is, is that we don't necessarily see the crazy thing. We're there to then help clean it up and help the people that are dealing with Piece it. Piece it together and report yeah. on it so everybody else can figure out what it was. Listen, the fire department is down by one. I got to go coach. Gotta, as I said, you got to go coach. <laughs> you got to bump them up. <laughs> yeah, right. it's good to see, see you, man. Thank Kelly, you. Steve, so thanks much. again for all of your help. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, yeah. I guess we, we should have uh, got Kelly down there a little bit uh, quicker. As we'll do the switch here. Get ready for period number three. And uh, as we've got Brian back on, we will get... Kevin back on here in just a second. There we go. All right, guys, we've got you set up. We're ready to go here for period number three. But we will hear from Paul Williams in uh, just about 10 minutes or so once okay. we, we get everything all set and ready to go. There we go. Sensitive microphones here. But it's a 3-2 game in favor of the police department. Fisher twice, Merkling. And then for the fire department, it's Keeney and Houston. Boy, is it loud in here or what? It is. I have a feeling it's going to get louder. This time the fire department skates from the left to the right, police from the right to the left. And we are just about to get this underway. So it's a close game, and that's... Absolutely. I see fire being a lot more cautious with the puck and just being more precise in what they're doing. But let's see what happens here. Jimmy's back on the ice, which is good. Chip shot by Merklin into the zone, but he was able to keep it across to Adams. Let's see if he can oh. get in there. Oh, Merklin had a shot, but it's another good block. Now that's that's not Dan down there in the goal, right? That is that's not Zachary anymore. No. no, that is Tim Shaw. That's Shaw, right? So he came in. Towards the tail end. Uh, yeah, about four minutes left. He faced three shots. 
of the 18. Zacher left facing 15 shots. Mm. Chapisa's oh. gonna play it back out in front. Friend was able to get across there. Yep. It looked like almost a deflection, but Fisher was able to control it. He's gonna slow it down. Oh. A good pass Chief up Houston the middle. Houston gets it back. Hill blocked it down. Ramsey's gonna go towards the net. Let's see what happens. Oh. oh. Hill's gonna stop it on the boards. you have a question for us? Did you say you had a question earlier? Uh, I did. Oh, here we oh. go. Come on, boys. Get that rebound. Oh, another save. Woo. I may have already asked police uh, oh. Chief Paul Williams it, so I'll have to, oh. have to ask yeah, again. No, I don't need to answer yeah, that. Chiefly anything. questions I'm, now. Yeah. yeah. I know my pay grade. Yeah, that's way below, uh, way above mine. I know that you can do anything once, but I also know when that once shouldn't happen. So. Yeah, just <laughs> once. Just once. <laughs> oh, goodness. Cisneros won the check on that. Philly D's dumping it down the middle. Let's see what they can do with it. Come on, boys. All around the it's boards. Gonna up. That's going to be icy. This is it. I don't think he touched it. They didn't whistle it. Oh, deflection off the stick. Keeney goes down. Came off the Can't tell who controlled it. Ooh, nice deflection. Oh, uh, Nielsen. The goes. Was able to clear the zone at least. That's good. Reese Haver's got it here. He's going to look to tie it up. Shaver again, now, right he, side drive, oh, oh what a oh. save. Did uh, he play college hockey or what was his I'm high? not sure if he played college, I do believe he played high school. Okay. Now he's from up near St. Louis. I don't know why Ride My Pony is the song playing right now, but <laughs> yeah. I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> I'm trying to send a vibe out. That's right. These hips don't lie, but yeah. you can't see that. <laughs> I definitely have a face for radio, so. Yeah. Let's go, sis. Zippers it oh, in. Oh, good save. Thirteen sixteen to go in the period and a three two police lead. <clears throat> Cisneros. Off the glass stays in though. Dumps it over to Phil. He's gonna try He's and clear gonna try it out. Come around. Steve's gonna try and get out of his own. Good. They're gonna try and get a shift change. This boy's been out there for a while. Fire's gonna control it though. Yep. Let everybody switch. Play it up to Papaw. Papaw plays it back to Shaw, up to Easter. Back to Shaw. Love save there. Oh, oh, just passed in there. Oh, a little, little chirpiness down there. One yeah. fireman on his knees there, but it looks like they get out of it. Yep. They keep control in the middle of the zone there. Reset a set of. Okay, guys, so the question that I'll formulate in a second here. Ooh, good save by Brian. Good save there. Easter with shot on goal. Another save by PD goalie. I know we're going to be talking about recruiting coming up, so, of course, any <laughs> new people that want to join. The question is, so with fire, what responsibilities do the rookies have? Oh. And then with police, what responsibilities do the rookies have? <laughs> so... I mean, our responsibilities for our rookies, if you will, are to learn how to be firefighters. That's what we hired them for. That's what we want them for. That's what the city pays them for. So uh, I myself, I'm a captain at Station 5. Mm -hmm. I get a 
rookie or a blue helmet assigned to me during this, after they leave their academy. And my expectation of them is to learn how to be a firefighter. That's what the city is paying them for, uh, is to be a firefighter to respond to emergencies. So uh, what's, what's the blue hat thing? So our probationary firefighters, if you will, are rookies wear blue helmets. So they're okay. identifiable on a fire ground. Uh, that way they're not asked a task that's outside of their means. Gotcha, uh, gotcha. Firefighters wear black helmets. Uh, so that just identifies them that they are a new person on the department. Mm. So uh, that's what I like. We do non, you know, training throughout the day, making sure that they keep growing that skill set. So, uh, you know, lay low keep your mouth shut and work hard kind of like what we alluded to <laughs> earlier yeah. i imagine it's the same on the pd side we're after hard work yeah that's what we want to see and growth ladder ball with a shot on goal caught in the glove good save by shaw there so 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 like the the tv shows they're not scrubbing the fire truck uh, fold in the hoses the right way. No, I mean, that's a task that all of us really should be doing. That's a, I, like I said, uh, I'm a captain. I have no problem washing a truck, cleaning my toilet, whatever. And you're I, a good leader. I want them to learn how to do this job. I've been very fortunate enough in my career at Springfield to have fantastic leaders that kind of paved the way and taught me how to do it. I grew in that, and hopefully these people can grow the same way. Uh, while that is a task, you know, uh -oh. they need to learn how. Oh, we got a chance here. Oh, Ooh. this goes wide. Good play by Hill to take Reshaver out, and oh, shot come goes on. wide. What I need out of them is to respond to emergencies. That's what sure. the expectations of our citizens that we serve is, not how clean is the toilet at Station 5, if you will. Sure. Uh, so that's what I'm looking for as well. I want them to be able to respond in their greatest capacity. Okay, guys, in, uh, did you have anything else you want, you want to say? Oh, I'm just waiting. No. Okay, Kevin. <laughs> so we got a little trippy on the ice down yeah. just a few yeah. seconds ago. Yeah. Looks so like uh, Hill and, and Greece started getting into it. Yeah. Right, so we'll see what develops. So, you know, you, you've seen those Chicago PD, the Chicago mm -hmm. Fires. How realistic are oh, they? The most realist of life that you can ever imagine. It's so <laughs> accurate. Yeah, really it is like the least accurate representation of what both sides do, okay. in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's drama. It's for entertainment. Yeah, it's drama. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's not the way real life works, if you will. Looks like they're going to call a timeout. Yeah. Kind of people calm down a little bit. I, from the fire side, I would love to go into a fire where I can have, see everything and you can see my face and I can look all around and it's <laughs> clear as day out, but that's not real life. Well, it looks like, this, oh, this looks like this is timeout yep. for raffles. This is the timeout for raffles. So oh. let's see if we can get police chief back in, Paul Williams. Oh. And we can. Chief's getting his tickets out. There, there you go. Chief's got a big winner in his hands, I think. Oh. And the ticket, everybody have their 50-50 tickets. Have I drawn this out long enough? Five, eight, zero, two, five, eight. No, oh. <laughs> not even close, not even close. Yeah, okay. off by a little bit. I would have donated it back anyway. Oh, no, that's what we like to hear. <laughs> so, Chief, uh, earlier we had kind of uh, emphasized here, I'm gonna get this camera kind of set up just a little bit more here. See if we can get that. Uh, eh, I said I turned it the wrong way. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> he trying to go. cut you out? Yeah. yeah. He's yeah, like, basically. we don't need a fire guy in <laughs> yeah, here. <laughs> exactly. So uh, we had talked a little bit about uh, uh, previewing recruitment, and same thing, Brian. You can talk about it too on the fire side. Uh, Springfield is in need of officers. Yeah, we're about uh, 55 officers down right now. Uh, we've been as high as 65 or so, but uh, we are in a a continuous active recruiting campaign. So we've done a couple things. Uh, man, we, we've got some uh, some marketing money. We have a huge nationwide marketing campaign to kind of get our, our word out, get our message out. 
and then changed up some of our uh, minimum qualifications. And then for the first time ever, we're offering some incentives. $5,000 for a brand new recruit, graduate the academy, we'll give you a bonus check. Lateral officer, which are those that come from uh, other departments with some experience. Same thing, graduate, you get a $10,000 bonus or incentive for uh, completing the academy. What is the age limit? There is none on the top end. 21 on the bottom end, but uh, literally there is no age limit, man. 45, yeah. 50, it doesn't make any difference. And I believe for fire, it's the same way. There's no age requirement. We're more of a certification-based or education-based or military-based yeah. for our department. So if you check any of those, one of those three boxes, put your application in. See, we did something new this year. We've always been military education. Those are two great avenues to get on the police department. But uh, my recruiters kept telling me, hey, there's, two, there's people out there that want to be cops that never went to college, weren't in the military, mm -hmm. uh, but they've been, that's a second career job. So, yeah. so we switched it up. So if you've got three to five years experience in uh, as a trade, you're an electrician, you're a plumber, you work in construction, you own your own business, you run computers, you're a detention officer, you're a paralegal. We open the, the window way open to let you come in and put your application in and take the initial test and see if it's right for you. So we hope that uh, that generates more interest. Uh, we had testing uh, just yesterday. We had 27 people sign up to come test to be on the police department. So that's about double what we've had on a monthly basis for the last six or seven months. Now, generally it's where you kind of go through patrol, then you get into other jobs. So can people say, well, I want to do this? Can, can they not necessarily pick and choose, but can they say that this is eventually what I want to do and kind of train for that? Or do you have to go through a specific way? Absolutely. You know, everybody signs up to put on a badge and a gun and uniform and drive around a black and white police car. And so that's a three-year minimum. We want okay. people to understand that 24-7 operation. You, you may work any time of the day or night, uh, but you get that experience. And then you can train for and apply for various positions throughout the police department. And we, uh, hey, we uh, scored. PD gets another goal there, 4-2. Look at that. Man, this, the tide has shifted, man. I'm wow. telling you, you re recruit a couple guys from uh <laughs> It all falls experience. back to recruitment, doesn't it, Chief? That's a hat trick, man. Everybody yeah. has to throw their hats on the ice. Yep. Uh, that's just, if it if it was number four official, well, that's it's his Fisher, third. Yep. yep. That's his third goal. So Fisher gets his third goal. And we had two waved off. What's that? We had two goals waved off, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, you kind of interrupted, hey, that interrupted by the excitement of scoring the goal. And yep. uh, congratulations to these guys uh, talking about the uh, uh, moving into the police department. So all these guys out are they, they work, you can work any position. Uh, it's a competitive process like it is to get on with the police department, but we provide training and uh, we do goal setting, and if you want to be a canine officer or work on the special response team or be a detective, go to homicide, work narcotics, you can work towards that goal. And uh, and like I said, then you apply, you test, you, you're interviewed, and uh, maybe you get to do that. Yep. Brian, same with, with you. Yep. So it's the same with the fire department. Uh, three to four years, you can test from firefighter rank to become an equipment operator or rescue specialist. You receive all the training like Chief Williams said, to help you along to that goal. We have goal setting, all of that. Oh, good save there out in front of the net by PD. Huge save there. All right, now we got, now a, we got, got a breakaway. breakaway. 14 gets back. Trevor Andy Merrick Merrick gets back. Yeah. This is becoming an exciting game here. Yeah, Merkman, yep. He scored the first goal, and he, he got one of those that was waved off, so yep. he almost put another one in. Yep, but, uh, for fire, just like PD, it's a competitive process testing, practical testing to achieve those ranks as you move from those ranks up to lieutenant and captain, competitive so testing got, process. Yeah, we have compet I mean, so I was talking about positions, but if you want to be a supervisor, it's a whole other process. It's yep. a competitive process. You can do both. I really encourage folks to figure out what they want to do to make themselves a little more rounded and then seek promotion to a sergeant or lieutenant and and yeah. uh, it, it benefits you, it benefits the people mm -hmm. you're going to be working around. If somebody's listening right and they say, you know, I, I, I would like to check this out, where can they go? Man, one-stop shop, gospd.com. Gospd.com, man. We revamped that. That's a 
Another big save by the PD goalie out front. Yeah, I would say he, he's played a phenomenal game. He's man. played a I'm phenomenal game. Absolutely. You know, we talked about scoring he's got, goals. Yep. Yeah. He's got 27 shots on goal. He's let two by. And I don't, I don't know if the Flyers ever scored less than 10 against us in the last four years. Yeah, so it's, yeah. he's so having a phenomenal game. Seven last year. This was scored, or excuse me, this shot was taken on a delayed penalty. There is a penalty that has been assessed to the PD. Sean Higgins is in the penalty box. So well, first power play for the fire department and a chance to tie this up. Uh, no, get within one, Steve. It's four to two. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, power, power play goals are two goals. <laughs> There we go right there. there Fire go. puts one in quick. Right on cue, Chief. I right on cue. Was coming. Yeah, he geeks yourself. <laughs> right on cue. Fire puts one in. Chief, I don't mean to be foreshadowing this, no, but, but uh, uh, we're within a goal now. Hey, power play with the experience they've got on the ice, uh, I'd, I would have put the money on that one. Yeah. So... We'll have to hear from public address announcer Tim Greasy on who scored that, who they're giving credit to. The previous two-minute hooking penalty is negated by the fire department goal scored by number 17, assisted by 12 for the fire department. So Greasy gets himself a goal. From 12. Goal at Houston's got it, goes, tries to go top shelf there, plays it back, picked up by this PD goalie. So Houston will get an assist. <laughs> Kevin Grundy over there. Grundy's he's, pumped, I like it. Yep, I like it. I'm, I don't think he wants the, uh, the microphone. Back I don't know if he does. He's there. trying to get the crowd going right now, Chief. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Chief, you're welcome to stay here if you want. I'll stick around, man. This is okay. be fun. He's taking on another role for you guys. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So that's a one-goal game now, and Rans has got it. I'm just going to say we need to get it out of our end. Yep, Rans takes it up into fires into the ice. Here come the fire. End to end action, man, I'm telling you. This is <laughs> Shaw's gonna go back and get it. So, police has Kaylee Friend out there. Remember, she took a hit earlier and she's back out on the ice now, so that's good to see. Happy to see her out there. She came back out in the second period. It's always the uh, primary concern for... Uh, oh, Easter tries to put it back in front of the net. Primary concern for the Chiefs is that nobody gets hurt. Yes. I think from all of our concern. <laughs> you, know, you get dings and, and bruises, but mm -hmm. uh, as long as there's no serious injuries. Yep. As Steve mentioned, I'm shorthanded enough. I don't need anybody getting hurt. <laughs> yeah, we are too. <laughs> we are too. <laughs> but you know, like when all's said and done and somebody comes in, uh, out, you know, for their shift, walking in with a bunch of uh, cherries all over. It's like, wh wh who, who'd you, who'd you run into? What guy? Oh no, no, it was a hockey game. Hockey yeah, game. against the cops <laughs> or against the fire department. <laughs> yeah. No, they good, do a good job of keeping it professional out there. Uh, oh, absolutely. I no. feel like they both know that we need each other at the end of the day. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, there's no. So it's a no check game anyway. Yeah. But, uh, no grudges are held for nah. minor losing control and hitting somebody. But cleared all the way. Do we get an icing call? Here we do. Chief, I'll ask this question. I, I've already asked Kevin and Brian, but uh, all the, the police shows that you've seen on TV, how accurate are they? Not. Yeah. <laughs> we uh, said they were the most accurate thing ever, Chief. Come on. There, there haven't been any accurate since Adam 12. All right? <laughs> I, I'll date myself. But, you know, Reed Malloy out there just handling calls. Yep. You know, <laughs> yep. But, uh, you know, all the all the forensics and, the, and the, everything settled in an hour and, and uh, how everything involves a chase or a shootout. Yeah. That just doesn't happen. No. 
So I appreciate the uh, you know producers and, and directors and actors getting out there and, and talking about policing. But uh, believe it or not, our our job's exciting enough. But uh, there's there's spurts of excitement. You know, and you can't fill a 30-minute yeah. or hour TV show with spurts of yeah, excitement. Yeah, realistically, we probably couldn't handle that much. <laughs> like, no, oh, like your yeah. body is eventually going to give Same out. Same thing with fire. I watch some of those fire shows. <laughs> yeah. All right, do they like go to a fire every hour? Yeah, it's like the busiest firefighting station in the right. history of the world. <laughs> when in reality, like, you guys have like 350 true fires. Yeah, we're close to, I believe, one a day. One a day. Right yeah. now, yeah. and that. Yeah course ebbs and flows right. we'll go a little run where we don't Which and we'll catch three in a day or yeah. whatever but yeah we're about fire a day on top of the other emergencies we might run yeah. but it's just unpractical and we have maybe 20 pursuits a year and one or two shootings you know with officers involved so uh, it doesn't happen every day uh, one of the things and i don't know if it is uh, both agencies but uh, there was a while ago where a crime lab was needed, and I think it's about, been about 10 years where a, a new office, a new space for for a lab was, was, was built. Yep, when I first got here, we used to have our own crime lab in the police department. A small lab did some things, and uh, Senator Roy Blunt, I can't, can't say enough about his work on this, but uh, the Highway Patrol built a crime lab in Springfield, fully accredited, fully functioning. They do everything for Southwest Missouri, so we basically shut down our little operation. Everything goes there. So we're blessed to have it right down the road from the police station. We don't have to send stuff off to Jeff City. Uh, and it covers everything from fingerprinting to forensics to DNA to firearms. It's, uh, it's a great benefit here in, in Springfield. I believe we had a penalty on TD there, so fires on the power play. Not again. Second power play for the thing. Fire's absolutely putting on the pressure here in the last 10 minutes. And yeah, they're, and it's they want it. Resulted in a couple penalties. Yeah, a little bit of chippiness going back behind the net there. Plays it out in front. Oh, oh there he goes down, but he gets a stick on it to keep Great control play. of it. Juice is going to bring it up into. Uh, intercepted oh. that one. You could see that one. Got a break yes. uh, look at somebody come off the bench. Good timing on that. Proper substitution <laughs> there. Absolutely. 107 to go on a shorthanded bid. Man, five minutes to go. This is getting fun. Yeah. Already it's always fun. It's always, yeah, always fun. fun. Yeah, always fun. This is a blast. Now, tonight I, I should be at a uh, bachelor party, but. I'm here. You yeah. chose to be with us instead of at a bachelor party. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Probably, well, we probably appreciate it. We yeah. appreciate it. <laughs> this is fun. I, I'll be, you know, it's an all-day thing, so I'm yeah. going to go after the game. Act, uh, you're not missing out then on no, anything, are you? Not okay. at all. Not at all. <laughs> get, to, get to be part of the fun late-night festivities. Yeah, it's not my bachelor party. Oh. <laughs> that would really be bad if you were that. missing it. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh. Good oh, save there by PD. Covers it up. Well, I spent the afternoon at a soccer game before I came here. My, yeah, I uh, said I was coaching 14U baseball before yeah. this. There you go. <laughs> so, Kevin, I don't know if, uh, uh, sorry, Brian, I don't know if we mentioned this or not, but if somebody says, I might want to be a fireman, where do they go? Uh, you can go to springfieldmo.gov, click on fire, and all of our recruitment is there. And I believe it is uh, SFD Fire Heroes. Um, I'll, but sprinklemo.gov gets you to our recruitment page to backslash fire. Lays out everything. Man. Like another good play there. Rapid fire. There's like three shots in the last uh, 10 seconds. Yeah, we were in the Cadence Insurance <laughs> final Got, five yep. here. Fire did a good job of keeping the ball in, or the, ball, the puck in yeah. to make a couple extra shots there. Five seconds yep. to go. He's going to clear this power play, come back to full strength here. Wait for that last Played shot. In. All right. They killed the power play. Now we're back to even strength for the last uh, four minutes. If Grease Haber's going to control it and bring it up. Oh, a nice save. Another good save. 
say that might be MVP right there. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Brian yeah. Russell, but I said before, man, Wilson's done a fantastic job in goal. He has played phenomenal shots, 35-26 in favor of the fire. We came in this period at 18-18, and now we're 35-26. Yeah, fire. Pressure's on. Yeah, yeah, fire's controlled this period, but the goaltender's just doing a fantastic job. And how many penalties? Two penalties? Yeah. yeah. Two each. Yeah, that's been it. Two power plays each. No power. Uh, one power play goal, actually. The fire got. Yeah, Grease Haber got a goal on the. Yeah, to get it. Get power it back play. To oh, wait a minute. There's oh, no checking. We're going to have a hit. Oh, that's Grease Haber put somebody in the boards there. Don't retaliate. Oh, oh no. no. The refs are going to get this shut down pretty quick. Sort it out. We were just talking about that. About this <laughs> we won. Clean game. Yeah. It only takes one, doesn't it? It, it takes just, one to blow it up. You're right. To blow it up and and. Oh, uh, they're back though. We're good. We're all good, but uh, yeah, it's a competitive group of guys yeah. out there. And well, and the funny thing they're is, stand up for each other. Everyone's going out after this, so. Oh yeah. Up. Yeah. Well, it's going to be one apiece. We're going to get uh, roughing on each. So it'll still be at even strength here. Yeah, we got a actually we got a roughing and a delay of the game. So it'll be even it should be even strength. There's a delay for the uh, extra hit there after the after the whistle blew. Yep, yeah, after the initial. Yeah. The nice view there of the penalty box, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see if we go four on four or and I believe if it's two minute penalties each we will go four on four but you know in in the this is of course is the fifth annual there was no game because of COVID right and I want to ask both of you real quick here chief how impactful was COVID on everything you know I think more of an impact than people realize in a lot of ways it, it really impacted our crime because we couldn't interact with people. You know, we depend on, on citizens to help us prevent crime and solve crimes. And uh, even the community interaction, we didn't go to community meetings, people weren't having them, everybody was staying home. So crime went up because of that. Uh, and it hurt our recruiting too. Uh, we couldn't replace people because we couldn't get on the road and recruit and people couldn't come here and test. I said, we recruit nationally, we don't just recruit from Springfield. So less people showing up, uh, let people to fill those uh, retirements and resignations that happen every year. So impacted us both on the crime side and internally really, really, really bad. So uh, four years now past that, I think we're seeing you know, certainly crime rates improve dramatically over the last three years. And I uh, hope the, our recruiting and our, our staffing is going to turn around. Brian, how about you? I mean, I, from as far as the internal part, I would probably say the same thing that Chief Williams said. You know, we saw a slight little decline uh, in recruitment efforts, um, but to mimic what Chief Lynn said, we're kind of on the upswing now of that, I feel. We talk pre-COVID numbers for recruitment, and we're kind of seeing those. Um, hopefully PD's seeing those as well this last year. So um, we're still, during COVID, you know, responding to emergencies and everything like that. So uh, just the but internal numbers. When you had to go on calls for service and tell people, you get to their door and say, stay there and I'm gonna stay six feet back and we're, yeah. gonna, we're gonna talk to you about what's going on. Uh, it just, it just it created a sense of you know, separation, which, yeah. uh, which impacts everything we do. Ours was a little different. We were going, you know, full medical PPE, glasses, gowns, masks, you name it, <laughs> which, is a lot, you know, as you're trying to respond to emergency to yeah. get dressed down in gowns and whatnot. And, and well, you needed to to protect yourself. Yeah, you know. it, yes, uh, completely warranted. We learned a lot from it, obviously, from a PPE standpoint, I feel like personally, yeah. of maybe we were a little lax before with masks, with PPEs, stuff like that. So uh, it was a giant, I feel like, cost the board learning. It was a little different, you know, we, we couldn't suit up on our calls. Yeah. I mean, you carry gloves in your, in, you know, on your belt, and you've got a mask, and you're, you know, you're wearing it, and having your pocket. But mm -hmm. that was it. Yep. Uh, and uh, you know, going hands on when you're arresting somebody or, or wrestling with somebody, uh, that uh, that exposed officers to a lot more. Oh, I the yes. disease. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
It's got to be tough because I'm sure, or did you wear masks during a lot of this? Uh, yeah, we did. I mean, just the, the traditional cloth mask. We had the the, the more uh, protective. The yeah, the uh, N95 N95, masks. N95, we mm -hmm. had those as well. Uh, but that's, and everybody was wearing them. The city had a masking ordinance, for yep. example, so we're certainly wearing those. But other than that, we issue PPE, but you don't have time to, to suit up yeah. when you're going on an emergency yep. call. So uh, us the same, you know, we wore masks in the station, you name it, which is hard because technically that station's your home, yeah. you know, so yeah. we were wearing masks in our home, but like Chief William said, there was a masking ordinance by the city, so that's... Even though you're right at your home, it's uh, those, yeah. those four or so five guys, but uh, they're coming from other environments. Yeah, they're coming from other environments. We don't know what people... So it was a learning process, to say the least. Yeah, absolutely. Glad it's over. Yeah. Uh, hope we don't ever see that again. <laughs> Same here. You know, Absolutely. 100 years since the last pandemic, I'd find yeah, go, go another 100. Go another 100 or two. Well, guys, we have 122 left, and uh, we'll see. Uh -oh. I, I don't know if we'll go into overtime here, but well, possibly. Steve, don't, don't jinx the police team. We, they didn't have to score a goal to send us to overtime. <laughs> well, the fans would like it, right? Oh, oh yeah. absolutely. <laughs> Okay. There's less than a minute left. Nielsen had it for a moment. Comes up the middle uh -oh. and stays in. Comes back to Juicy. He fanned on it. Shaw plays it back. Right, plays it, it in. Going to have one more shot. Nielsen has it. Man, plays Please it into the middle. In soccer, we call this packing the bus, man. They are, uh, they're putting everything on yep. defense. Goaltender coming to the bench. Here comes Last 30 seconds. Fire's going to pick up the extra skater with the pulled goaltender. Chief Houston has the puck. We got 25 seconds left here. Shot it wide. Oh, big block by PD there. Goes around the boards. Did they keep it in? Got it out. We're going to count it down. What do you think? Huh? Yeah. Nine. 10 seconds. Oh, that might do it. Five. They did, yep. The whole game. Oh, we got a stoppage with one second to go. Yeah, some sort of stoppage. Yeah, icing with 1.2 seconds left. Oh, that means they're going to bring back and have a face-off here in, yeah. the, in the zone, man. That's, uh, all right, everybody, calm down. <laughs> five. So the goaltender will continue to be pulled. It'll be a six on five. Now, I know in the National Hockey League, 0.9 seconds a goal was scored, but yeah, this is a little bit different. This is a little different than that. They put they put a second back on the clock. Oh, they so did. 2.4 left. That's more than Houston's a time. going to take the face off. We got Grease Haber setting up for a shot. Important face draw. off here. Who wins a draw? Uh, police wins a draw. Oh, there we go. There you go. <laughs> That's the game. All right, man, I got to get to the locker room. Yes, All sir. Right. <laughs> Thanks so Thanks, much, guys. Steve. Appreciate you doing this. All right, Chief Williams. As you see, everyone surrounding goaltender Brian Wilson from the, fire uh, from the police department. As the fire department, they go ahead and surround Tim Shaw. Shots on goal, they were a lot in the third period. That was a lot. 10 on Shaw. With just one let by him. And he just let the one through. Twenty shots on goal on Wilson. Let me, do, let me do my math here. Twenty-six shots on Wilson in the third period. Thirty-five the total. Twenty-eight total on combination of Tim Shaw and Dan Zacker. And let's uh, go ahead. We'll get Kevin in here in just yeah. a second. But he's doing a hell of a job hyping up the crowd. Get yeah, you going. Absolutely, you were hyping. I get a little excited. Yeah, you left me here with the chief. I'm I don't sorry. 
He outranks me. Yeah, I get it. Remember, get you it. can do anything once. Think, yeah, oh, no, trust me. Yeah, I'm, I'm one of the poster children yeah. probably for that. Man, what a great game. Holy cow. Holy cow. Ugh. So, for the first time in five tries, Whew. the police get a victory. Woo, boy. So, I don't know if, uh, and sorry if I did this, I don't know if I did any foreshadowing <laughs> for, or not, Brian, but. Uh, I mean, hey, he said it in the first period, recruitment. Uh, your most recent recruit. <laughs> what do you have? He had a hat trick. The hat's off to your goalie. I mean, Brian played, well, both yeah. goalies played lights out. Yeah, lights, lights out. out. That is phenomenal hockey. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I'm totally geeked out that we won. <laughs> but it was just a great game. Like, no significant injuries. Look, at, I'm sounding like a coach now. <laughs> Everybody played great. Everybody played, played a great game today. Yeah. Okay. Well, the, inter the interesting thing is, just when we got through talking about this whole thing with Chief Williams about make it calm, don't get into any arguments, and then we get a little scrum in the corner. Yeah. Well, that, that's, that's what's crazy. And it, it's just kind of ingrained in this. Like, it's the competitive nature. Well, no. <laughs> we, we've got to think about it like every day. If we're, if we're out like and someone tries to hurt my teammate, hurt one of the other officers, sure. hurt one of these guys, or EMS or anyone. It's just kind of on us to just, nope, that doesn't happen and we jump. So it was no surprise that when one of ours guys get checked in yeah. the board, our immediate reaction is like, you don't do that to us, and then we do it right yeah. back. So, uh, but yeah, uh, I, I, I was pleasantly surprised by that. <laughs> I didn't yeah. know what the T meant. What's the T, did they both get kicked out of the game? Or no, they just happened? got two minutes, right? Okay. Yeah, I oh, believe. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I get my sports well, mixed the, up the again. Team, yeah, the D is an unsportsmanlike conduct, oh, okay. so <laughs> that's probably what they got. Or a T could also be a timeout, actually, so it okay. uh, depends on, on what they, they did. But we'll go over the goals quickly for you. Keeney and then Fisher for the PD, and then PD's Merkling. This is in the first period. Houston then makes it a 2-2 <laughs> game. In the second, Fisher gets the only goal, and then in the third, Fisher for the PD make it 4-2, and then Grieshaber comes back on a power play for fire at 6.02, and it was a close one towards the end, even with a couple of power plays, but the fire could not score. They pulled the goaltender. They still could not no. score, and uh, just a great game. Looking forward to number six. Oh, my goodness. Very much so. Retribution. Well, it reminds me of a joke I heard. Oh, you know, yep. You know what the why uh, magicians and hockey players have in common, right? What do magicians? They both do hat tricks. <laughs> so fitting that I read that today, and Fisher actually got him, you know, got him a little hat trick going today. So that was awesome. There you go. Well, we had four goals last year by Nielsen, and now the PD yeah. comes and back with three come for back Fisher. To three for Fisher, absolutely. So what a great yeah. game! It has been a, it has been a blast. Fans are filing out. The uh, police are on the ice. They're getting a picture taken. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, Chief just, down there, yeah. Just to throw this out uh, before we go off the air, the photographer Joe Tom uh, Thomas from Green uh, Green Box Photography. Yes. Thank you so much. Donates so much of his time to I know fire. Uh, Does I a think great job. PD as well. Yes. Uh, excellent. Like I cannot sing his praises enough for what he does right. for us fire. You know, just taking pictures things like that kids sporting events you name it you call him he's there snapping pictures of your kids does so you can have him job, if yeah. you can't be there so if you're listening uh, give him a whirl yep he does a uh, great job green well, box photography excellent i appreciate that and speaking of being there i know scott Lutsky wanted to be here uh he had uh, some other things he had to do at home mm -hmm. but you know he's keeping us on the air he's yep. doing everything from uh, two and a half hours away Thanks, so scott. Wow. Scott, thank you appreciate it hugs and kisses and yep our, same our cameraman, there's Scott from his house. And uh, Amari, I wish we could get a, a word in on with you. But Amari, our cameraman, Amari, thanks so much for, for doing this for us. Of course. Yes, thank you. And thank you for having us out. Oh, Absolutely. We appreciate it. Totally, totally fun out here, hanging out with everybody, yep. getting, getting after a little bit. Yep. So. 
Good stuff. Uh, I will say uh, that uh, we have a, a brand new center ice camera. We, we uh, tested it out today. Uh, Mari, how'd you like using it? Oh, this was great. Like it was sort of like I had to get used to like centering in it at the point, but then I started adapting to the camera. I was like, yeah, this is a beauty right here. Absolutely, and it was a beauty of a game too, by the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's that's always fun. <laughs> well, guys, final thoughts as we uh, finish things up here for the fifth annual. Um, not to sound cheesy, but <laughs> everybody on the ice is willing to give their life for everybody else watching. I yep. think that's pretty cool, and we can't forget that that we love just being a part of the community um, yeah there's a lot of jabbing back and forth but we all know that we all want everybody to go home at the end of the night and yeah uh, I mean, we love our community yes yeah, just to play off what he said <clears throat> at the end of the day out here they're playing against each other but tonight right now tomorrow we're all playing on the same team yep like yep. so we can put all this fun aside we need them they need yep. us, yep. maybe. Oh, we <laughs> I do. think they we do. do. Well, but we it, just don't it, like saying it. Yeah, yeah, like we need each other, and we uh, we're in a spot right now. I feel like between police and fire, where we know that. Yeah. Uh, this is all fun and games, but right now, there's people out on the streets responding to calls, working together. Yep. And it's a wonderful thing to have that relationship with PD. 100%. To be honest with you. Well, I can tell you, as a citizen, citizens need you guys absolutely whether we, some want to admit it or not we need police and well fire. we appreciate it uh we love doing it uh yeah we don't know, do it for anything else other than this is what we want to do i believe we have a lot of laterals that come from other departments and <coughs> excuse me one of the things consistently is like man the community supports you guys 100 mm -hmm. percent, and that's that can't be said enough. Like, yep. uh, we don't have to deal with some of the things in other parts of the country do because mm -hmm. our community supports us. They want to yep. see us. You see that through the Green County 100 and how Miss Roberts talked about that. And, and it's just it's just an overwhelming response to to how we partner together. Yep. And I to iterate that I came <coughs> from another department uh, besides Springfield Fire, and the just the city, the citizens mm -hmm. like you feel it yeah. when you're out there. You know, so. It's it's a good thing to be a part of. Yeah, Scott's trying to say something here. Uh, thanks for the great commentary, gents, <laughs> from Scott. <laughs> yeah. So I look for forward that. to I'm next okay. year. Yeah. I'm yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. That's writing, dude. That's like uh, yeah. that means we get to work tomorrow. <laughs> yes. That's Absolutely. what that means. <laughs> well, I think people don't want to hear us banter anymore. Everyone, but uh, is gone, but us. So uh, oh. we will uh, get out of here. All right. But yes, once sir. again, uh, it has been a four-three victory for Oof. the police and. And, again, a big thank you to you guys for stepping in, Kevin Grundy of the PD and Brian Fick of the Fire Department. Absolutely appreciate you doing this for us as, again, the fifth annual Police versus Fire Charity Game is a 4-3 victory for the police. Thanks yeah. so much for joining us for Kevin Grundy and Brian Fick and Amari Johnson and Scott Lutzke. I'm Steve Casson. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next year in another round of the Police vs. Fire charity game. Thanks so much. So long.